pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to today's the queen. <laughs> uh, meeting of the Transportation Licensing Commission. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you are not satisfied with a decision made by the Metropolitan Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Mm -hmm. the, the minutes from last month have been circulated to the commissioners. Have uh, those been reviewed and is there a motion regarding approval or any change? Um, have we, are, are the minutes correct? Have they been? Yeah, they've been I do have a, a note about the May meeting when this one, the, the May minutes, I'd like to okay. share with you, but these particular minutes, I'm, they're ready for your consideration. Well, we've had an opportunity to review the minutes from the July meeting, and I would make a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Mr. Fields, you, you said you had a statement about the May minutes. I do. At the uh, at the May meeting, I made a, there was a conversation that existed uh, regarding one of the uh, companies that said we would have a discussion at the June meeting in the, in preparing the minutes it ended up being the con the statement said we would discuss it at the May meeting so in the May minutes I said we would discuss it at the May meeting obviously I made an error in that and uh, one I'm sorry that I made the error but two we probably need to correct that to say the June meeting well we need a motion to I amend the meeting the minutes okay I make a motion to amend the May meeting the May minutes to reflect the revision stated by Mr. Fields just a moment ago that the discussion was to be in the June meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, first item on our agenda today, we've got our annual meeting for consideration of pedal vehicle and low speed vehicle applications. Um, Mr. Fields, looks like we've got three mm -hmm. pedicabs requesting uh, additional carriages. Uh, correct. Uh, the, the, your rules require for both the pedal vehicles and the low-speed vehicles that you have an annual meeting. This meeting was established as, for your annual meeting. There were no applications for any additional low-speed vehicles. I think it would be appropriate to ha have the hearing to call it, but there's nothing to discuss and close it, and then you've met your rule. Is that? Um, hang on. Here's, here you go. I mean, it says the TLC shall, shall have an, establish annually a date for consideration of certificates of public convenience and necessity for LSVs, as well as a request for additional vehicles from existing companies. There, there's nothing to consider under that under for low-speed vehicles. Yeah, I mean, you could open the public hearing and close it again. All right. Uh, at this time, we're we'll open the public hearing for. Um, our annual meeting for consideration of additional low-speed vehicle applications. Having received no applications uh, for additional low-speed vehicles, uh, we will uh, close the hearing. And uh, no action. And required. take no action. And then uh, also we have our annual meeting for additional pedal, pedal vehicles to uh, consider. And do we have requests to speak on that matter? There are three applications for additional vehicles. The Country Music Crawlers requested for additional pedal carriages. Um, the Nashville Party Pedal is a new company that's requesting four pedal carriages. Nashville Pedicab, which holds a certificate for uh, pedicabs, is requesting uh, 
to also have five to add five pedal carriages. It would be a separate certificate because it's two different things, but it would be uh, it would require an application and consideration by the commission. So. And typically what you do is hear from the companies, and if there's anyone who wants to speak, you would go after the presentations from the companies. Is this what's uh, pictured in the photo of the five ones they are requesting to add? I see a photo of uh, Like have Correct. There were photo there were photographs as a part of the application process. Barrel some of the some of the applicants had provided photographs of what they would anticipate using. <clears throat> All right. Besides the three um, companies, has anyone submitted a request to speak? Anyone here from any one of we don't have we don't other than the companies the yeah. Metropolitan Police Department are here they'd like to be heard on the, and during this particular hearing right. other than that I've not had anybody else all right at this time we will open uh, our uh, public hearing and I invite uh, country music crawler forward good afternoon my name is Michael Wren. I'm here on behalf of Country Music Crawler. Introduce yourself. Yes, I'm Susan Pizzatola, the owner of Country Music Crawler. Um, we have applied for four new permits. Um, currently, Country Music Crawler is operating with one permit here in Metro Nashville. Um, I know the application calls for four. At this point, I, I think the recommendation that we would really make is for two additional permits. We would put the total number of permits at 21. Now, your standard of review when determining whether or not to issue a permit is whether it's required by public convenience and necessity, whether the applicant is fit, willing, and able to provide the service, and whether or not they're able to conform with the rules of this commission. And looking at Country Music Crawler, the applicant is fit, willing, and able to provide the services. They've been a part of this community since 2015. Their operating history shows that they're fit, able, and willing to provide the service. The owners have been active with this commission and with Mr. Field since they've been involved with this community. Uh, and they, based on that, they meet that criteria. Um, they've also conformed to the rules. Since they've been operating, they haven't had any complaints with which they've had to come before this commission before. Um, they have an open line of communication with this, communi with this commission and Mr. Fields. And the owners are often out overseeing their bike when in operation, speaking with the police and the traffic and parking commission employees. Um, and they also go out in the field and oversee their employees while they're operating their vehicle. This brings us to the big criteria, and the one that I know you guys are, are considering the most is the public convenience and necessity. And there are a few different ways that we can look at that. One is the need. Is there a need for another permit or more permits for these types of vehicles? And looking back through Country Music Crawler's business from 2016 to 2017, they've turned away an average of 200 people a month because they only have one permit. This shows that there's a demand for the service in this city. Another way that we can look at the necessity and convenience is the contribution of these uh, permits and these carriages to the city. This is a tourist-based industry, so it contributes to locally owned businesses um, by the establishments that they stop at or bring across while going through the city. It also contributes to hotels, motels, and short-term rentals in the city. They contribute through the taxes that they pay through the city, and it also contributes to the small business community as well. Again, this is a locally owned business with one permit. The big issue that you guys have looked at, and I know you've had two traffic studies that we've, we've seen the impact of these vehicles, is what impact is it going to have on the convenience and necessity as far as the traffic in Nashville? At the last meeting that I was at, April 26th of this year, we had talked about the latest study and a proposal that we had made. Um, and it was actually in the study, and that was talking about route restrictions and zones for these vehicles. We had proposed three zones, a Midtown, a Broadway, and a Brewery Tour 
which is something that the three companies that run in Nashville already do at this time. Currently, there are 19 permits. If we add two, that gives us a total of 21 permits, seven vehicles per zone. The reason we think that this is beneficial is right now there is no way to know how many vehicles are in one area at any one time. If you have three zones, seven vehicles in those zones, this commission has a way to regulate how many vehicles are in a zone. It will ease traffic in the non-zoned areas um, and give us a way to know how many vehicles are in one, one area at any one time. So based on the convenience and necessity, we think with this proposal, we meet the criteria um, to be granted at least two permits in this instance. And if the board has any questions, I'd be willing to take those now. Why have you decided to go from four to two? Well, at this time, we are in a position where we could take on four if they were granted. Um, we know that that is probably not likely in the situation with the history of, of the commission not issuing licenses, I believe, for the past two years. Um, and in light of the um, latest low-speed vehicle study. Um, but that's why, based on the recommendations that we have made, we think 21 total permits make sense. Um, but if the commission would find it reasonable and necessary to issue more, we could handle four. So you change from four to two because you think we might be more inclined to give you two? Uh, anything that you guys are inclined to do. In light of your own understand. review of the traffic study. Correct. And the uh, convenience and necessity. Correct. We think it, we would love to have four, but I think based on the information that we've been provided and reviewed, we think two makes sense. Okay. Do you believe that two is the most the commission should consider issuing in a total amount, considering there are two other companies also seeking permits? I think it makes sense. Now, the two other companies that are applying, I, I don't know as far as the, the criteria that the Commission is supposed to look at, whether they meet that criteria or not. I know based on Country Music Crawler's history of being one of the three companies that's been permitted, that they've provided these services, that they meet the criteria of being capable of performing this service, and also being capable of following the rules that this commission uh, implements. Um, and so whether or not more licenses are permitted to those other two companies, I have no way of knowing if they meet those criteria. But his question is, do you think two is the maximum we should be giving across the board? Uh, two is the maximum that we can handle in the community now? Two additional? Pop probably at this time. Now, I think that as time goes on and the construction in downtown Nashville subsides, I think that these companies could look at other areas. Nobody's operating in East Nashville. I think that would create a new zone and new permits for those zones. But at this time, in looking at where these companies are operating now and where they're allowed to operate, I think that makes sense. Mr. Pizzis. Pizzatola? Pizzatola, yes, sir. Yeah, Ms. Pizzatola. Yes, sir. Were you not up here on a complaint at one time? Yes, I did have one complaint. You did have it. So he had it in his notes. He overlooked I'm it. I'm sorry. All right. So, and what was the nature of that complaint again? I brought out my second bike. That's right. Yes. Yeah, there was some pictures showing what two bikes yes. instead of just one. Yes, sir. Right. You mentioned earlier in your conversation about being able to track and, uh, each pedal tavern if we restricted how many pedal taverns were in a zone at any one given time. Who would you suggest police that? Well, I think that's part of the permit process or the licenses that you're giving out. There are permits for different zones. Right, but the permits have to be policed by whom? Traffic, traffic and parking. Mr. Milton. Right, and so and are, are you guys aware of Mr. Milton's staff? Yes. His, the capacity of his staff? Yes, sir. Okay. So. If there's seven bikes in each area, you know. Because as of right now, at this moment, there could be 16 bikes just in the downtown Lower Broadway and none in the other two areas that they operate. And if that's the case, the traffic impact in that area is going to be significant. 
if it's spread out, you know exactly how many bikes are in any zone at any one time. I think it makes it easier for you as far in, in the rest of, of transportation and parking to determine what impacts it's going to have on traffic downtown. So um, in essence, we, we would place another restriction for each zone, for each company, for each time zone. Well, and I believe it's something that this commission does with like horse carriages. They have certain routes and zones that they operate in. Um, and so it would be, be similar in that effect. I'm just trying to understand uh, what you're suggesting sure. and, that, and make you realize that your s suggestion is on a broader statement than you're making it, it's not just going to involve saying hey uh, seven of you can be in zone a seven of you can be in zone b from two to four from three to five uh, you're all restricted during the rush hour times and then uh, possibly some rotation because that's going to restrict uh, also uh, each company's money-making ability if they can only if, if we're now restricting them to certain time zones, certain, and that also uh, encourages a certain amount of responsibility to Mr. Field's office that they don't already have to undertake, which I'm sure he's pretty understaffed with the growth of the city, to now police how many pedal taverns are in what zone at what time. Well, I think any way we look at it, there's going to be regulation <coughs> issues. Even now, I think there are regulation issues. If you have 16 pedal taverns in one area, uh, one pedal tavern alone is not the, the traffic issue. I think it's when you have two or three lined up at any one time over a small stretch, that's where traffic issues become, or w w traffic becomes an issue based on the study and the time it takes for these vehicles to get through an intersection. I don't think it's one that's holding up. It's when you have multiple in any one area at any one time. I think we're, we're suggesting as a way to spread these out, alleviate traffic concerns. Um, I think I noticed that Sergeant Bork is here, and, and he has to deal with these vehicles downtown and the traffic concerns with that. I think if he knows that there's a cap on how many can be in any one area at any one time, I think it's going to make his job e easier. So. Um, regardless, I, I understand your concerns and I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. Um, we're just looking at ways to take in the latest traffic study that was done, use its findings and apply it in a way that helps these businesses and also helps the city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now let's hear from Nashville Party Pedal. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Frederick Barr. Um, uh, we'll be the owner of Nashville Party Pedal. Uh, we put a request in for uh, four bicycles. We're a new company. Uh, we've been, uh, I have a hot dog business and catering business that we've been working in the downtown area uh, for almost eight years. We're um, active members of the Nashville uh, Visitors and Convention uh, Bureau. Uh, and so we want to um, put our request in to uh, be a part of um, this business that uh, is booming here in Nashville. Um, we are a minority owned company and uh, we look forward for the opportunity. We understand that there are the uh, parking, uh, uh, or shall I say the traffic um, regulations and I've been watching online for a couple of years as far as the meetings and the requirements and <coughs> so forth and we feel as though that we're ready, capable and able to uh, meet those requirements. Um, any questions for me? Have you already purchased these? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> that wouldn't be wise. <laughs> okay. So there is uh, no infrastructure at this time set up for it other than research. 
uh, the research, which which is our infrastructure as far as uh, operations and so forth, and how we would plan to do everything, and as far as setting up the website and getting our clients and I mean, uh, a, so forth. An actual place to house the pedal taverns to do yes, yes, at, 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 at uh, my facility. Okay, which is where? Uh, it's uh, in South Nashville. We're in the process of purchasing it, closing on it uh, next week. How'd you decide on four? Um, four? Because of the, the current staff that I have, it's something that uh, I believe that we can manage uh, to be able to have four. Uh, I didn't think that at this point, as far as having five or six, uh, I don't want to stretch out into that, as well as I know from watching the meetings that uh, you all have put a restriction on, I believe it was how many uh, one company, at one point you were having discussions of how many one company uh, uh, units one company could have. Do you have any evidence as to why it would be in the public's best interest for you to have additional or to have uh, pedal carriages? Well, uh, I'm, as I stated before, I'm in the hot dog business, and I see the uh, dozens of people randomly walk up to the pedal taverns directly in front of where my, my hot dog stands are, and that there are people that are turned away that would like to be a part and enjoy the Nashville experience of uh, riding on the pedal taverns, and they're, uh, they're being you know, turned away, and I just want to take advantage of the opportunity. Okay. Other than the anecdotal evidence of people being turned away, do you have any evidence regarding the impact of your request for four pedal carriages on the traffic in the downtown community? Well, I do understand uh, from that uh, certain times of the day, for example, as far as the restrictions, that there's a restriction. Uh, do you have any statistics, evidence, or anything to suggest the impact four additional carriages would have on the downtown community? No, I, I've not done any research. I mean, I've, I've viewed your research and listened to the police officers that have come and testified at your meetings regarding the impact and the research. Uh, and that, the, that would all be negative to additional carriages, wouldn't it? The officers have said that traffic, that these carriages really impede traffic, whether it's one or four. Well, you, the, you would have to admit that the statements from the police officers who monitor traffic downtown are not in favor of additional carriages. Well, actually, from what I saw at one of the meetings about two years ago, uh, it, had more, it had more so to do with the issue regarding to the time frame as far as the restrictions, as far as when there was uh, uh, in early in the morning or in late after in the evenings when it comes to um, the traffic leaving downtown. But uh, downtown is not always busy. If you, like I was down there the night before last, it was dead as a doorknob on 2nd Avenue. I mean, sometimes Broadway is busy, but other times it's not. That's why, you know, all businesses don't stay open. How many people does your pedal cab seat? Uh, we're looking at one just that was seat uh, 16. Can you tell me more about your hot dog business? Oh, sure. Google $2 hot dog and $1 water. That'd be the start. <laughs> um, uh, I'm also a Sony recording artist. I used to be, have a stand on the, uh, there on Broadway. Uh, we have about, uh, uh, in our eight hot dog stands, two food trailers, a food truck. Uh, we work with the city of Nashville for the 4th of July, New Year's Eve. Right now we're setting up for Live on the Green. We uh, many events. We work with D&D uh, &D events. Uh, we have set up at the state fairgrounds, the municipal auditorium, so we're we're very we're pretty occupied. How many employees do you have? Uh, we have uh, 18 people. Who's Erica Barr? That is my lovely wife of 27 years. Okay. <laughs> well, Mr. Barr, thank you very much. Anyone have any other questions? Thank you. Thank you for your time and consideration. Great day. Uh, next, we'll hear from Nashville Pedicab, LLC. Hey, y'all. Dustin Olson, Nashville Pedicab. Uh, Billy misspoke a little bit about what my application actually says. Um, what I am asking to do in my application is to liquidate my 20 pedal cab permits and transfer them into five pedal tavern permit, or permits, essentially taking 75% of my permits off the road. Um, my pedal taverns are going to be a completely different size. If you can see the pictures, they sit at tops, six people, with no bartender in the middle, no bar down the middle, and just a driver. So they're about half the size of any given pedal tavern that's in Nashville right now. Um, so we would be half the size, and I would be wanting to cut my permits from 20 pedicab permits to five pedal tavern permits. 
drastically reducing the total number of permits allowed in Nashville. Out of those 20 permits, how many of those do you actually have on the street at one time? Depending on events, I have all 20 on a normal Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 15. So 15 out of the 20 on a normal basis? On a, yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all and 20. You basically take that down to five? Five, yep. And so these are going to seat fewer people than your current. No, ma'am. So my pedicab seat two people in the back. These are going to seat six total people with a driver up front. The picture I have shows the rear end of the thing. I can't really tell how long it is. Can you give me an idea in this room? Yeah. Oh, I can right give you there. the exact dimensions on my phone. That's all right. I think you made a visual. Just, sir. Just an yeah. idea from that post over there. Oh, and a visual. If I'm if I'm standing here, the driver of it's at the column. Okay. And what's the big barrel on the back of them? It's just it's supposed to be for storage. It was like it was a joke. It's like a beer barrel type thing, but it's not pressurized or anything. It's literally just for storage. And it seats six passengers? Six passengers, one driver, no bartender, no bar down the middle. It's much less wide and it has a much shorter wheelbase than the current ones in Nashville. It still has electric assistance? Yep. And you would not be... Uh, I would need no longer operating pedicabs. No, hold on. You would not be offering refreshments on the carriage? Well, the same as they can now. They can bring their own, but no, we don't bring them for them. Okay, so they would bring their own cooler and set it down in the middle of it Correct. and serve themselves? Exactly. Ma'am? Why the smaller versus the... Smaller versus the larger? Uh, the larger, I've, like, I've, I've witnessed the traffic uh, congestion that it does have, and also a lot of times it's harder to fill up the 14 or 16 seaters. A lot of times they'll have a group of 10 bachelorettes and then a few people that aren't in the bachelorette party that are just kind of along for the ride. Can't be the most fun ride, so I'm trying to market to the people that have between four and six people that are wanting to do a tour instead of a, a bachelorette party. So, same question I asked uh, Mr. Barr. Yep. Do you have any evidence, statistics, or something that will show us what impact it will have by going from 20 pedal cabs down to five carriages? Nope, just my basic arithmetic. Five is way less than 20 by 75%. So I'd be taking 15 permits off of the road. Um, not only that, uh, Music City Rickshaw, the other pedal tap or the other pedicab company, has three permits. They have let their insurance lapse, and they are not renewing for next year. So if you guys switched me over to five pedal taverns, you would no longer have to worry about pedicabs. Bork wouldn't have to worry about pedicabs. Billy wouldn't have to worry about pedicabs. Nobody worries about pedicabs. <laughs> not necessarily. Nothing. Well, and, and right. Nothing stops. Until me. until next August, right? But legally, we wouldn't be allowed. You know, there would be no pedicabs until a year from now. Seems to me the pedicabs move quicker than the. Um, Carriages, though. From what Depends I'm, on who's this, in the this, back. This is my, you know, just from my observations when I'm driving down church or walking <clears> down Broadway. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it 100% depends on who's in the back. Um, it depends on the strength of the rider in the front. There's, I mean, there's a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. I can pedal the bike faster than my 120 pound girlfriend that also rides. It's just the nature of it. And it's easier to get around the uh, petty. Uh, cabs than it is to get around the carriage. That's relative. So we've had many, many no, meetings. I know that fact. Right. Real, real. I know. I wish you guys would have brought that up when we would, when we keep getting banned from CMA Fest because we get locked up in the same pedicab pedal tavern that we're the same, we're the same difficulty to get around. And then now when I want to switch them, we're, we're easier to get around. I wish we'd have said that last year. I know it's easier to get around a small. I do too. I wish it would have been said at council. So. Um, can you tell me what uh, prompted you to, to make the switch? Yeah, it's getting harder and harder to make uh, money off of pedicabs in the city um, due to a lot of things. The fact that we can't stage on Broadway, the fact that we can't be on Broadway right now, the fact that for the last two years we've been nixed out of trying to work CMA Fest, um, where we're a transportation company and we get nixed out of the downtown area for CMA Fest. Very, very, um, very, very hurtful to our business. If we had a touring company, then we can just stay out of the downtown area and it's not as hurtful. What can you live with? Can I live with? Yeah. Three would be great. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much. Thanks, y'all. And uh, Mr. Fields, I believe you said Sergeant Bork is here. You, he wanted to offer some comments? Sergeant Bork, yeah, he wanted to.
comment. But we did not have any other. If anyone wants to speak, there are applications, that, not applications, but there's a forms in the back. If you want to speak on this issue, please fill one out and bring it up so we're going to be able to introduce you to the commission. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sergeant Bork, Metro Police Special Events. Uh, very interesting ideas from all three. <laughs> Uh, when we saw the 13 on there, I think you know what we felt. You're almost doubling the number of pedicabs that, I mean, uh, pedal carriages that are on the road uh, with about a, a six mile an hour speed limit, uh, not only for special events, but just for any day traffic. Moving six miles an hour is very frustrating in the downtown area. Uh, we often see them, and I'm not accusing any of these companies of doing this, um, in loading zones, hanging out, waiting for people to come out. That is not, that is against the law. The biggest problem with a lot of the ordinances that the council cooks up is they say, all right, we're gonna have this ordinance, such as the scooter ordinance, and the police are gonna enforce it. And we just don't have the time or resources to enforce it. I wish we did, uh, but we don't. So a lot of it goes unenforced. And we do see uh, many of these <coughs> carts illegally parked on 4th Avenue, where it's no parking. We see them in loading zones, just sitting there with the driver and the bartender hanging out because they're waiting for their group to come out of somewhere. And that doesn't leave space. We have a lot of lifting over and we're getting more. We've seen more at our special events this year than ever. Uh, Lyft alone did 1,200 at Live on the Green last week. Uh, so that is a lot. That takes up a lot of loading zone space. And these are people being moved from these events. Well, on Broadway, that's where a lot of our loading zone is. So we got to see that stuff turn over. And when they're just sitting in them, it's not turning over. Uh, we also have, get a lot of complaints from the uh, Music City Center, the Convention Center. Uh, where the carts are using their uh, cutout lane on Fifth Avenue between DeMarvin and Korean veterans uh, for their pickup and drop off. It is their lane, they do own it. Uh, it's a weird setup. Uh, we told them they would have issues with who's going in there now because it's, it's accessible to the public from the roadway. Uh, but their big thing is to have a convention going, everybody's not drunk in there doing their stuff, but the pedal cab pulls up, it's got a bunch of drunk people on it, they go into their facility, they're yelling and screaming, they're using their bathrooms and making a ruckus. So they have issues with it as well. I would think certainly before you put 13, and I'm not saying what you do, what you do is what you do, but before you put 13 on, I would, I would hope that somebody would reach out to the merchants groups and to the, uh, the residential groups uh, in the area. Uh, I met with the Pinnacle today about some uh, moving traffic during special events out of the Pinnacle garage because uh, there's a lot more competition around them now, so things are slower. And they mentioned the, the pedal carriages in the meeting as well, because they go down 3rd Avenue a lot and uh, the slowness of the traffic through there. Of course, they, they mentioned construction and there were other things as well, but we definitely have a concern about putting 13 more of these on the street. Uh, interesting idea with the zone thing, separating them, and, uh, and the gentleman was right. You know, right now you could have all 20 downtown or 19 uh, all in one area. And if you did separate it, certainly that would cause less congestion. Uh, but anytime we're trying to pull for a special event, if we're trying to pull the traffic and we're keeping all these lights green to make the traffic move, like uh, this past weekend where 75,000 people left three venues all at the same time and three quarters of the 75,000 parked downtown. Uh, that's a lot of people to move in one area at a very, you know, uh, in, in a very streamlined fashion, and if you have vehicles that are going six miles an hour, we're not moving anything very quickly. So, and that's all I have, unless you have questions. Is the police department currently right now with the 19 um, pedal carriages, is it enforcing rules with respect to those carriages? Is it issuing tickets? I, I don't think they have time. I don't think Central Precinct has time, and I know when we're doing special events, we don't have time. We're too busy with trying to pull the traffic. Most of the stuff is warnings. Hey, move your carriage out of the way. It needs to go. So they're not getting a citation. We just want them to move and just keeping things, just keeping it moving. Are they compliant with that? Yes. I, I'm not aware of any of them that have said I'm not moving. I think some of them have said they need their people to move. The ones that don't have motor assist, they need the people to pedal them. But outside of that, if they have the motor or whatever, they're, they're gone. Or if they have their people there, they're they move on. Shouldn't all of these have electric assist 
to the point that they don't need the people on them to move unless they're on a grade? The ordinance does not currently require it. Uh, I think the commission could, through, I, I know the, the council obviously could make a change. Most of them, it's my understanding, have been going toward, they've been adding the motor assist because they've recognized the need to move a little faster. I don't know if they've all converted or not. I, obviously they haven't based on what the sergeant just said. Quick question, uh, Officer Bork. Uh The gentleman who was here early, pardon me if I didn't remember your name, uh, suggested a 75% reduction in his, in his uh, pedal cabs to six smaller pedal taverns. Would that have, do you feel that that would have uh, an impact on the flow of traffic if 20 less uh, pedal cabs were on the road versus six smaller um, pedal taverns? If, if, they're, if that many are being utilized, we haven't seen that many in the past year being utilized all at the same time, but certainly if there were 20 at the same time, even what we noticed, and I, and I know he doesn't like that we restrict him during CMA Fest, but one CMA Fest, I forget which one it was, we gave them an exception and let them operate because allegedly their electric assist allowed them to go to 25 miles an hour, where apparently that's empty downhill because what we saw was more like eight miles an hour with passengers uphill. Well, it's, it's downtown Nashville. Unless you're on Broadway, everything's uphill. And even on Broadway, once you get to eighth, you know, you get past fifth, you're going uphill. So that's why we would restrict them as well as the pedal carriages, the pedal carriages because they could just not achieve the speeds. So they were in the way of traffic, certainly where there is a one lane road and there's no room to pass. So reducing it to six would likely uh, reduce that issue, would, would give us less traffic issues. Even and so and so, if we only allowed him three, that would have even a greater impact if the twenty were gone. Correct. Correct. Or incorrect. I, I agree. Okay. Well, you brought up the general enforcement of the rules. That's a problem with the nineteen that are currently out there, as well as any new ones that are are added. So that's another. That's one issue to look at. Enough policing. And I'm using that word generally speaking, not trying to say it belongs on the police department, but enough policing to keep these uh, carriages in compliance with where they park, where they load, where they pick up, and things of that nature. Um, if we had a number of like four added, um, yeah, I know, I know you, you shudder when, I, when we talk about 13, but <laughs> envisioning maybe four and trying to find a way to better police them something you can work with? Well, I, I mean, certainly we would like to see less because that would make everything easier. Uh, and I'm not telling y'all, you know, uh, what to do. Uh, the problem with the better way to enforce, uh, enforce it, I talked to uh, a small panel of council people that were trying to enforce some other metro ordinances that had gone by the wayside and uh, they couldn't get funding for it because what really needs to happen uh, is kind of like a civilian, kind of like the uh, parking patrol where these people can police these metro ordinance and issue tickets without a police officer. That way you can track it, you can, you know, their units would track it and pass it on mm -hmm. through Billy and you could have a better understanding of just how this is impacting which companies are compliant, which aren't, because you're never going to get that with the police department because the police department's are never going to have the time. So it would have to be some type of, uh, I would think, civilian unit that would be empowered to issue tickets like the parking patrol can issue parking tickets. We'd be able to issue these metro citations and track it through that way. Frankly, I think your priority needs to be on bigger things than keeping carriages in compliance with no loading zones. Uh, Agreed. For sure. And I'm trying to think of a way that complaints could be brought to our attention and we have a zero tolerance. If they're caught doing that, the permit gets pulled. Uh, and, not, and so it's not put on your department. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And for while the sergeant's here, he and I have spent a lot of time talking about how can we better Im better enforce all the rules. And what we have are 
we have two inspectors that are responsible for only the rules that we have. We have no authority over, for instance, 12, 1240 is, tra is traffic and parking issues. Though, or that's the ordinance dealing with parking and such. We have no authority over parking other than carriage stands and cab stands. So we can we can write a citation to somebody that's using one of those, but but the inspectors of traffic at, at, in our office uh, and and me also we I can't write one on anything other than what's within our ordinance. The police can write them all, but what we've got is an influx of of thousands of vehicles, and I can tell you within 90 days I'm going to have about 2,000 scooters. Uh, I'm not. They are coming. And uh, we anticipate issuing a certificate within the next several days that will allow them within 90 days to add a thousand scooters within Davidson County, each. It is. Uh, there are challenging days for enforcement. And I appreciate. I was going to what I was leading to. I appreciate what the police do because they do scoot them along, move them along, and we're appreciative of that. Anything else? Thank you very much, Sergeant Bork. Um, did anyone submit a request to speak, Mr. Fields? Did any more? No, no, sir. All right. At this point in time, we are going to close the public hearing uh, on our annual meeting for consideration of additional pedal vehicles, and we'll now open it up for deliberation to answer the initial question of whether or not uh, the commission has found that there is a. Uh, an additional need for uh, additional pedal vehicles to meet the public convenience and necessity. And so just to be clear, we can, we could issue all of them or we could issue none of them or somewhere in between? Well, the initial question must be answered of whether or not we deem that there is a need to meet public convenience and necessity, and if we say no, then we stop with our analysis. If we say yes, then we can decide to issue one, all of them, or still none. Well, I've clearly heard testimony or statements today that there's a, there's a, a demand for additional pedal carriages out there, and I haven't heard anything saying that there hasn't been people turned away from the current uh, companies that are available. So I would say, I think it's unequivocal that there's at least a, a public, I don't know if the word demand's the right word, but there's a public, uh, uh, the public wants it. I mean, you know, I, I realize that there are inconvenience <coughs> to a number of people, and, and there's a member of this commission who uh, has talked, has had real life experience of how annoying they were, but there's no doubt that uh, people who visit this community want to ride the pedal carriages. And so I'd say that unequivocally there's evidence today that there is a public necessity for additional carriages. Uh, I would disagree only because we're, we're hearing an anecdotal evidence of customers calling asking for uh, reservations or an ability to ride on a carriage and they're getting turned away I don't disagree with that but I, I wouldn't necessarily automatically characterize it as um, the public demanding it I think there's clearly a customer demand um, I still think it's a question of whether the public is really demanding additional carriages um, that's Really, the only thing I would point out. I, I know we haven't gotten to the public convenience aspect of it, but um, that, to me, I don't think it's necessarily a given that there's been a demonstrated need for additional carriages. Only the only thing that's been demonstrated to me is that companies are turning down potential business. Yeah, that, that's similar to what I was going to say, which is customer demand doesn't necessarily equate to a public need. I, I don't know that the two of those are the same. I know when we evaluated adding additional cabs, it was the customers who were, who the cab companies were unable to 
provide transportation for as we were in determining whether there was a necessity for additional cabs. So I was evaluating as here there is a um, there is a tourist type activity that we have people coming into this community who would fill those carriages. So I would have to agree with you somewhat and agree with you as well. And I know that sounds a little precarious in that um, there's definitely a want for it and uh, a need for it, be it public necessity, that's the gray area. Uh, there is a want, there is a need. Uh, in my mind, it's the necessity for it. In one issue that I heard today, volume alone uh, gives me great consideration in that um, 20 units of any type of transportation that clogs our downtown system would be taken off the road and not even have the ability to be reissued till next year. Is that correct, Mr. Fields? You, you have to have an annual meeting. You can add at any point uh, through public hearing. So you can, you can revisit this issue. I'm sorry? A specially called meeting? Correct. It would have to be a specially called meeting. So um, just in volume alone, um, and the consideration of just three of those being added versus 20 being on the road um, seemed very appealing to me on, in that aspect alone. As far as adding 13, um, I drive downtown. I, I, I have to deliver to all these new high rises downtown, to all the buildings in Germantown, uh, on Third Avenue, to all the high rises that are going up through there. And I can tell you that the tractors, the pedal taverns, as far as how many I see uh, that, that causes problems for our delivery teams, which are the businesses, which are creating places for uh, the businesses to thrive and people to live are affected by it. Um, so as far as 13, no qualms about saying absolutely uh, that number is out of the question. Uh, so, finding a, 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 a even a less than middle ground, uh, being not even considering half that number would be appealing to me. And, uh, in, in the aspect that a certain point of the need would be met and the want uh, and filling in that gray area of necessity. Okay, what, what do people think about, uh, I should say, what do my fellow commissioners think about the public convenience factor, uh, particularly in light of Sergeant Bork's comment that um, the Metro Police is unable to issue citations and in otherwise enforce current regulations against the pedal carriages with even with the existing number already in place. That's where I think what was being expressed before that I fall into is that I, looking at the public, I, I see the necessity, I see the need out there for it, whether it's customer based or public based, but it's a public convenience that I think we're sharing the same reservations about on, on this issue. And it is very inconvenient for most of the public and very enjoyable by those who are on, on those things. Um, I, I, you know, I've got plenty of experience being downtown. I worked downtown and I, I, last night I ate downtown. And uh, you can see people really enjoy being on the carriages. Um, it, it's, it's a part of the attraction for the bridal parties that are coming here. Well, I think in, in terms of public convenience for me, in regards to the Nashville public, <coughs> people that live and work here, that are here day in, day out, it, it, it's, it's definitely an inconvenience. However, if you are staying here, there's an added convenience. Mm -hmm. um, so, how do I... You know, I, I'm I'm just putting that out there as something to consider as we're deliberating, because I guess it just really, if we're, we're if we're if the term is public convenience, 
it, it kind of just depends on what segment of the public you are you're thinking about in, in regards to this. And for the public that the people who own these companies, it's a boom for them. Yeah. Um, so we're back to what this commission does all the time. We're balancing uh, the inconvenience to some aspects of the public against the uh, convenience to people who visit our city and people who make a living uh, catering to people who visit our city. It bothers me, um, though, that when I hear from our own police department that they're unable to enforce existing laws against the existing number of carriages on the roads right now. But that's um, not going to change whether we add two, three, or four just more. just makes it worse. Not. Well, d does it make it worse or is it just a, a continuing problem that the Metro Council or perhaps when we need to look at uh, part of the registration or part of the getting a permit that there be funds that, that we increase the, uh, the cost of a permit so there's funds to employ as Sergeant Bork was talking about, the uh, a public a person who can ride on one of those little scooters and, mm -hmm. and start writing citations that's a, that's or taking pictures. Idea. I like that idea. I mean, well, I mean, I think we have to consider that uh, we we are trying to balance a scale of justice here. We cannot disregard the businesses here just over. Um, someone not wanting a bridal party to be yelling outside their apartment uh, that particular night. It, 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 the, the scale of justice here is not to weigh for, for just their benefit and solely to the public to have peace and quiet downtown and, and vice versa. So, um, and not necessarily issuing 13 permits because um, we do have to realize with the growth of Nashville, 100% of that problem is not the pedal taverns and, and the bars. It is construction downtown. It is the growth of conventions and events in Nashville and that there are people who drive from, from Kentucky and Alabama and, and even as, as far as Virginia that I have experienced into Nashville for events uh, that also congest that is the growth of Uber and Lyft uh, also in those same concentrated areas that we don't regulate uh, and so that does have to be considered in, in part of Metro's problem with the issues that we do have to concern ourselves with. I guess again my, my main concern and I'll use a, a common phrase I don't want to get ahead of our skis here uh, and if we issue additional permits uh, when we're already stretching our existing resources with the police department to enforce existing laws with the existing population of permits, uh, it's, it, I believe it will be a continuation uh, and possible worsening of our situation where we have pedal carriages not complying with the law and knowing they can get away with it and other than just hey move along uh, that's not good enough and I think that the police uh, if if we are going to issue additional permits we need to get um, better um, commitments not the right word but a better indication from the police department that it is able to uh, deal with the additional permits that we would be issuing well Let's do it the other way around. How is not issuing additional permits going to change the lack of enforcement on the street today? It's not. So the problem is, what are we going to do to get in, uh, investigators or people on the street who can enforce, who can start monitoring it and, and, and writing citations? The police department doesn't need to be writing citations tied up writing citations for pedal carriages or Agreed. pedal cabs or anything else like that. They need to be protecting the public uh, from what's starting to, to protecting the public and moving traffic. Uh, so how do we come up with a the resources to put people out there who are going to start enforcing this? Well, if we wanted to do his idea of increasing the price of permits, to provide some money for uh, the salary of a person or, or people, I guess, depending on how much we increase and how much that 
fees or the, that individual is being paid, what would that look like? Is, is that something that we could do as a commission? Would that have to go to council or like what, how, what would, can you walk us through that process? If that's like one, if that's the, one of the main concerns. Mm -hmm. I think you, with the commission, we have a, you're gonna have a mixed bag. I think there are some fees that the commission can set independent of the Metro Council. There are other fees that only the Metro Council can set. Any fee that we charge, we can only charge a fee that uh, we can only recover the expenses that we that we um, spend. So in other words, we can't make money. It's not so, what we had, we, in order to do what you'd like, if you're gonna suggest this, what we need to do is do a, um, a basically a performance audit of what we do and how we do it, where our time is spent and how much would go to that particular one. It, for instance, um, uh, in, Metro, in the ordinance right now it says the MTLC will set a fee to be charged for the issuance of each permit, each approved, pet, and this is for pedicabs, it would also be the same for pedal carriages associated with the expense. So for instance, if you determined that the pedal vehicles needed a officer uh, or, or a someone, what would happen is we would do, we would have to do a study and their only thing they would do is basically enforce those particular ordinances. Uh, you know, I could talk generally what a salary would be, but it would, so what it would amount to is the fees then, would, you'd go back to the, each one of the, the, the three companies of the pedals and, or the five pedal vehicle companies, and if we had um, an officer, for instance, and I'm, say, and I'm saying not a police officer, but an officer <coughs> maybe along the lines that Sergeant Bork discussed, uh, a quality of life officer, for lack of a better word, uh, it would probably be in the range of, of $60,000 by the time you put benefits and that sort of thing. There would not be any equipment or anything. So it would, it would be easy to say we'd need to generate anywhere from fifty dollars to $70,000 to put, and that's just for a, one person working a shift, uh, a 40-hour shift each week. It's, uh, it, it's a challenge in, in terms of what, what the police were talking about, and that's just not for all of what we do. Uh, or just for this, uh, all what we do, we're very limited in what we have authority over. If it's a tr any sort of a traffic issue, we have no authority over at all. Now, if somebody violates a traffic ordinance and it's brought to our attention, yes, you could bring we can bring that in front of the commission. But if it's outside any of uh, you know the 672, 673, 674, 675. Uh, now 1262, uh, I mean, I could go on through all of the ordinances because we have a plethora of ordinances that, that you're responsible for. It would, it, yes, it can be done. It will probably take to do it, some of it will take Metro Council action, some of it would take, um, uh, well, let me back up, all of it would take Metro Council action to authorize a position. We can't just create a position, it has to go through the normal civil service processes uh, and approval. So in order, we could generate money, but we would still have to get approval. If we were... Mm -hmm. And um, again, the commission has authority. There's no question about that. I, I, would, I would support that act in that if, if we are going to allow the companies to generate more funds, uh, I would think they would need to be in a in an agreement with us that, uh, and if if we're going to allow them to generate more funds, we are going to have to create a way to police uh, the ability for them to generate more funds. At, at the present time, in the pedal vehicles. We probably generate, well, I can tell you what the fees are. We charge an annual renewal is $250. Each vehicle is then charged $50. Um, if they apply, there's some application fees. The drivers pay $20 annual permit fees. So a company with, uh, with two pedal vehicles would pay $250, another $50 per vehicle, so it would be $350 is what they would be paying, what they currently pay. Well, I mean, I a lot of these companies have come before us and expressed that they are missing out on hundreds or thousands of dollars and that if, if, if we allowed them that extra vehicle, not four or five, that extra vehicle or that extra two vehicles, if it's going to generate a hundred thousand uh, dollars, it would be up to them if they could live with the increase in the cost. 
Bottom line is I'd like to pass the call. Well, Sergeant Bork has communicated to us that there's an enforcement problem with these carriages. And I would like to pass the cost of the enforcement onto the companies mm -hmm. rather than the citizens subsidizing it through our police department or ignoring the problem. Did I take a motion? <laughs> well, I, I think it's a, uh, no, not yet. I'm, I'm going to think about process a second. If, if the commission wants to increase fees, what we would need to do is we'd have to figure out why do we want to increase fees. Well, we have more expenses. At this point, we wouldn't have more expenses, so we, I think we, and I'm not trying to be funny, cart and horse issue. What we'd probably need to do is do a study, do a, either, either through by staff or ask for a consultant mm -hmm. to do a study, determine what would it cost to establish a higher level of enforcement. The authority that the commission has at the present time is probably not sufficient authority to do what Sergeant Bork described. That being said, we would have to go back to the Metro Council and, 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 and through the administrative process working with the police department because the, the, the police department is fully authority, have the solo authority of, of uh, police power in, in within the metropolitan area. We would need to work through the process of, okay, what would it look like, how would it look, work through that and then come back the commission would consider it, do a public hearing, then we would go back to the Metro Council and seek the position and if we had it funded if and, and it's, describe how it would be funded. How do we start that process? Again, I think it goes back to we'd have to study it. Um, so yeah, did I, we make a motion on, on, who on funds the study? study? Or? We could do that. <coughs> That's true. Who funds okay. the study? Well, it'd have to come out of existing funds of the Public Works Department. Could could we just have an internal study as opposed to a we, outside? We, this, what we need to do in order to, again, the, the, the biggest test we have is we can't charge any fee beyond what we're expending. So what we'd have to do is make sure that we were clear. We could certainly ask uh, the HR department. We could ask Metro Finance to assist us. Um, we could we can use whatever internal um, experts that we have to determine how would we do it. We'd also need to go and put together a, an idea from the police department, okay, how could we do it? The, what makes the most sense is have a police officer. Uh, you know, the, the Metropolitan Parks Department have officers that are police officers that work for parks but under the supervision of the Metro Police Department. Uh, I don't know if that's possible or not. It's not something that's been thrown out on the table for discussion and, and decision. Um, again, the other side of it is the industry would have, you know, would have to have some belief that the industry could do it because we, you could also create a position. We could increase the fees and nobody would pay the fees and then it doesn't matter because the fees have gone up to $10,000 a year or $2,000 a year or whatever those, and I'm just throwing, I don't have any idea. Yeah. And it'd have to be spread. In other words, it would make sense then to look at everything we do and see what would it cost to put together, uh, you know, how many, how many people would you need? How would they be supervised? Are they supervised through the department? Are they supervised outside the department? Which, again, I don't, I'm not a kingdom builder, so as long as it gets done, that's all that's significant to me. Right now, it's a pretty good deal. For $350, you can get a permit to run a carriage and make, what, $100,000 a year off the carriage? From a, from a city standpoint, um, you know, just put it in perspective, one taxi cab is $255 a year. And you're saying whatever we, whatever fee is charged, there has to be, I guess, proof or it, it's only Whatever fee they are paying is covering what it's costing your office to do the job. Yeah, and I, it's I can speak to that a little bit. So um, that's um, kind of a, a, I mean, ultimately, I mean, I think that derives from the Tennessee Constitution. But the idea is that local governments have very, very limited taxing authority. And so um, when you are um, recouping your costs of performing a service for the benefit of the public, that is not a tax, that is a fee. Um, when you go beyond that and start generating revenue, that can be determined by the courts to be an illegal tax. Um, and so that's why we are always very careful to make sure that our permit fees and other similar government fees are cost-based.
Well, I, I think we definitely should um, consider as a commission. Uh, it, with, with, with just a little indulgence, one of the things that I was going to ask you to talk about during uh, uh, other business, uh, Mr. Blackburn has made a suggestion of what could be done and was going to address that particular issue with relations to, again, it was in, in general, what could we do for additional enforcement? He has put some thought to it. Uh, you may or may not want to hear from this particular moment, but the, the I can pass that. It's, it's now part of the record. Uh, again, I, I think if you wanted to go forward on this, you know, then what we need to do is, is, is <coughs> go forth, put together, you know, figure out what the scope is, and then begin the process of, okay, how would we do it? What could it look like? And again, some thoughts already been put to it. Uh, I know outside the commission, and we could certainly put some thought to it inside internally. Right, I, and, it, and I was about to say, I, I know Mr. Blackburn has actually proposed something similar for the horse carriage um, mm -hmm. uh, issues that we are currently dealing with. Um, and it sounds like it would be rather similar to what we were thinking about, or at least wanting to look into for the pedal carriages. Um, I do want to try to keep us on track with the immediate issue, though, in front of us, uh, which is deciding if there is a, a public inconvenience and necessity for the issuance of additional permits. Um, you know, one thing we may want to consider is deciding that at this time that there isn't a public inconvenience and necessity, um, but that if we are able to do what we're considering, which is um, outsourcing or funding ourselves through additional fee requirements on the pedal carriages, uh, a position who could help enforce our existing regulations. Uh, if, if, if we're able to do that, then I would think certainly then the city would then have the capacity for additional permits. Could I make a suggestion? Could we break this down? We have three, three different ones here, and Thank you. country music and national party pedals seem to be in the same boat. They're just suggesting to us that they want additional carriages. I have to say, Nashville Pedal Cab has got an interesting proposal there, taking 20 pedal cabs off the road and put a couple carriages on. And I would like to consider that one separate from the other two. So would I. <laughs> so I'll make a motion that at this time there is not a public convenience or necessity for country music crawler or Nashville party pedal for additional carriages. Can we do that? Can we decide that there is a public convenience and necessity for some companies and not others? I mean, I see it as a more general mm -hmm. determination, um, and I think that's been consistent with how we've done it in, in other contexts. I do. I think all of your deliberations have been very appropriate. I, I do think that what public necessity and convenience looks like could be very different in the transportainment arena than it is, like you know, with taxi cabs, for example, where you know that may be someone's only opportunity to get out to the grocery store or something like that. Um, but um, uh, I think you could determine that there is not a public convenience and necessity for additional vehicles to be added to the overall traffic well, scene, I guess, of pedal, the metropolitan pedal, government, uh, pedal transportation. but still yeah. find that, you know, if, that, that if a particular surrender of permits for pedicabs in exchange for granting of permits for um, I don't know. It almost seems like the surrender should happen <laughs> separately. Um, uh, oh, I would I'm definitely assuming he make does not want to surrender them unless he gets the new permits. Correct. Um, that, that if, there, if there is not a net additional strain on the, the traffic of the city, that, that maybe that is... Um, definitely make it a condition of the granting of the... Mm -hmm. And 
Not even all five, I think was the request. I think to give up 20 and get three would be a big benefit. My personal insight. Of course, the commission would have to agree. I don't mind even going with two. I, I would go there. Am I the only one that thinks that these are, are kind of two separate issues? I, you know, I think that we need to find a way to enforce the laws that are on the books better, but I, I don't, I can't see why that would, why that would influence our decision on whether or not the current proposals that are before us are of public convenience or necessity. Uh, in my mind, I, I see it as better able to meet um, public convenience if we have an existing infrastructure in place that allows us to enforce our rules and regulations against the permitted vehicles out there they're better able you know when we pass a rule that says you can't operate between the hours of three and five or seven and nine in the morning and the police sees someone is operating a carriage at that time they can pull them over give them a ticket, issue a citation. Right now, apparently, that is not happening. Okay. But I agree with you. I think they're two separate issues. The chairperson and I probably just definitely <laughs> disagree on this, which is good to see on this commission for a change. <laughs> but I agree with you. I think they're two separate issues, and I don't want to punish people who have shown me a necessity for them by shutting them down because we can't enforce the, the rules. E yeah. Because the police don't have the time. But bluntly speaking, because the police understandably don't have the time to, to stand there and write out a citation when someone's violating it. Yeah, I, I so. hear what you're saying, but I'm, I'm still inclined to believe that, it, you know, it, it's just not fair for us to punish the current applicants because we as a community can't enforce what we currently have on the books. Well, I'm not saying we're punishing them. I, again, I just don't want to, um, I want to make, been the wrong word. I, I want to make sure, put words in your mouth. I want to make sure that we as a city have the proper infrastructure in place, um, <laughs> so that we can have more carriages, so that we can have scooters or whatever vehicle transportation, um, system that comes before us mm -hmm. and you know I, I guess what I'm my my biggest concern is making sure that you know we're um, properly involving the police department to um, help us enforce our rules and regulations so uh, that we put it uh, implement whatever resources we have uh, to make sure that as our city is growing, as our population is changing, and uh, downtown living is changing, and as the tourism industry changes, that we're able to uh, tackle all that. And it sounds like our current infrastructure is holding us back a little bit in our ability to consider additional permits. Uh, I mean, if Sergeant Bork came up here and said, of course, yeah, we're able to um, put an officer on that, commissioners. Then we, I don't think we would be having this discussion. We would just purely be saying, okay, well, sounds like there's a customer need, um, and um, the public convenience is not being impacted too much. So let's grant an additional two permits or three permits or whatnot. So I, I do think they're connected. Um, I'm, I don't think. This, this analysis that we're going through, and if we were to decide not to issue additional permits at this time, I don't think that's a punishment. I think that is reality of what we're dealing with as a city right now. And um, I mean, we have um, budgetary concerns, I know, as a city. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued by possibly our ability to fund uh, an enforcement officer and if we can do that fantastic um, but that's 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 where I'm falling down on this 
Well, let's look at what the real public inconvenience is um, to the police. Instead of writing a citation, they're telling people to move on. And we've heard from Sergeant Bork that they do move on when they tell them to move on. So they are enforcing the regulations once they catch them on the spot. They're not writing a citation that gets up to us or gets into General Sessions Court. But he did say they do move on, they do comply. As far as for parking at Metro, at the Music City Center and using the restrooms there and being rowdy, the Music City Center has guards down there all the time that can chase folks off and say, you know, you don't need to be in here. I, th I think, though, that there, if, if people knew that they were going to, that there's a higher likelihood that they could get an actual ticket, mm -hmm. they just wouldn't do it at all, and it could keep the traffic flowing better than it currently is. There would definitely be a higher deterrence if you knew you were going to get a ticket and a fine mm -hmm. and appear here than there would be just being shooed off by the officer. But I'm balancing the, the inconvenience and the convenience to the police department. Billy, do you hear much? Because one of the things that Sergeant Bork had mentioned was we should try to hear from merchants and residents downtown. Do you? I don't hear a great deal from the merchants pro or con other than the uh, establishments that work with the, the pedal carriages themselves in terms of they have relations, the pedal carriages have relationships and I can't, I don't know how they all work so I, I don't try to speak for them on that as I was told earlier but what I can tell you is what the merchants have said they do enjoy having the pedal carriages come to their bar and consume their their beverages and then move to the next spot is my assumption. From the neighbor's standpoint I've I, I'm pretty confident since 2015 four, 15 when, when we, I think when we started this, I've not had any, any neighbors say I really like uh, the, pedal, the, the pedal carriages being downtown. They just, it's, I'm not saying there's none that don't like it, I'm just saying I hear from people that are concerned about the noise, uh, the blocking garage op entrances where they, when they park to let people go out. Um, uh, not being able to get in and out of their their home because of of not just pet but traffic in general. So I, I don't want it's not all about the pedal carriage. It's certainly not. But uh, but specifically you asked that and yes I've had calls to, to the negative on that side. I don't know if this is helpful, but um, section 675030 that has the the finding of public con um, convenience and necessity also has a part B which says, in making the above findings, the MTLC shall at a minimum take into consideration the number of pedicabs and pedal carriages already in operation, whether existing service is adequate to meet the public need, the character, experience, financial condition, and responsibility of the applicant, and such criteria as may be adopted by the MTLC and its rules. So I think, I mean, at this point, we have deliberated this uh, to a crisp at this point. <laughs> and, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to call for a motion or a vote on either to approve or deny. Uh, I mean, we, we, we um, well, again, I, the initial question is, is there, and, and this would be the motion, um, to either move or uh, that there is a public convenience and necessity for additional permits or that there isn't. And then we can decide, you know, if, if the additional uh, permits or in which company. I would like to make a motion that there is a need uh, given the reduction and that we cannot <coughs> separate the three that uh, there is going to be a reduction in uh, the amount of pedal or pedal driven uh, vehicles on the road, given uh, the fact that one of them are going to give up 20 of those particular, that, that will definitely have an impact on uh, public need and necessity. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. I make a motion that we 
find that there's that we do not give Country Music Crawler an additional one, nor Nashville Party Pedal additional carriages, but that we accept the invitation by Nashville Pedal Cab if they will liquidate their 20 uh, sure. permits for pedal cabs and give them two pedal permits for two pedal carriages. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, nay, any nays? Nay. Uh, motion passes. I also want to emphasize to Mr. Lynch, I'm going to have a zero tolerance of if I find any carriages that are parked in the loading zones or other places from my perspective. Absolutely. Hopefully the same tolerance for the other companies. Absolutely. And j just to clarify, Mr. Fields, that, that was a 3-1 vote. We got approved for two, not three, right? Two. 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 Now, just from an administrative standpoint, so what's going to happen? Then I'm going to be, I'm going to be at your at your vote. I'm going to be requiring him to deliver me a letter, surrendering his petty cab permits. I would in turn then issue him a certificate for uh, a pedal carriage company, and would allow him to have two pedal carriages. Correct. 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 So we liquidate the petty cab company completely. We create a pedal carriage. Pedal Carriage Company. Correct. Okay. I think he's gone by the same company name. Same company name. It'd be the same structure. It's just a matter of we we shift from this category to this category. Okay. All right. Um, so now we move on to another public hearing. We've been requested uh, to review a rule for low-speed vehicles. Um, Excuse me, we've been requested to review a rule uh, governing low-speed vehicles. The name of the rule is it's a proposed um, addition for allowing low-speed vehicles to have an um, exception policy for operational areas. Thank you. At, as you will recall, at the uh, July meeting, and I'm certain it was the July <laughs> meeting, you, there was a discussion about when a low-speed vehicle company asks to operate outside the bounds. It was involving a wedding that would be operated uh, off Trinity Lane, and so we put together the process, and, and we actually approved it, as I understand, and I'm not going to speak for them. The wedding is, did, not, it did not work out. But the question became is how often and how should we work the process of special request, you ask that we have, uh, we develop a concept of, from a staff standpoint, uh, we did come back and review it. Uh, in fact, Commissioner Warren uh, volunteered to help me think through the process. So we put together an idea uh, that would give you a structure, then you would have to sort of fill in the blanks in terms of how many would you let. We also created a application that would be filled. Um, so we need to have a public hearing to discuss the rule, but basically the rule would say that uh, there, there would be a certain number a year that they could use, there would be a time period in which they'd have to make the application, uh, and then there would be a process where traffic and parking would be consulted, the police department would be consulted, and then any other agency that was appropriate for that particular event you know, potentially uh, the uh, stadium authority or the or the the Bridgestone or whatever, depending on what the impact is, um, and then uh, uh, and then be able to come in front of the commission and say, "Here's the request." So, I'm sure there are people that want to speak to the idea of the, and currently, in order to have a spe in order to work outside, it takes either the commission approval or it takes my approval. Uh, you know, for instance, today uh, Joyride requested, or yesterday they made a request to work at Nissan Stadium on behalf of the Titans to stay within the footprint of the stadium and the property owned by the stadium to shuttle Titan fans from the parking lot to the uh, stadium and then from the stadium back to through the parking lot. Uh, we, um, it would be under, it was under contract. I, after consulting, making some consultations with various folks, I determined that I would give them permission for a single day to do that. Um, but because it would be in, in, it would actually be outside the time, but it was not, they were within the footprint of being able to operate in terms of the boundaries, they, time they did not. So I did grant them the authority to operate today. 
uh, but uh, normally what we would do if, if there was a process that would be something that we bring to the Commission um, but since it's on stadium property yeah. again it, we felt like there was no impact to traffic there was no impact to uh, anything other than you know on the property of the stadium which is under the sports authorities uh, purview would we even have any I'm, I'm not sure you would yeah. we, I, we, we didn't again because of the timeliness I did not want to do anything that would impede joyride uh, from from being able to do what potentially is agreeable anyway we did not take we didn't have full time to go we did consult legal but we didn't have time to go through you know talk to the stadium talk to the sports authority and do that sort of thing uh, what will happen after today assuming it goes there's no problems the police are monitoring all that I would be going back to those other entities and saying oh, do you have any issues with this and assuming that then we'd let them operate all right um We've got uh, two people who have requested to speak on this issue. Um, Mr. Winters. And if anyone else wants to speak on the issue, please fill out a form and bring it to the front so we know who it is for the record. Hello. Michael Winters from Cruising. Just had a tractor shirt on. Don't hold it against me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this comes up occasionally. Uh, for instance, we've got one we're working on right now. It's where they're going to close down. And, and this, once again, it runs into sometimes operational zone, sometimes time frame. Um, so I don't mean to co-mingle the two, but a lot of times they co-mingle themselves. Um, we've got one where they're going to close down fifth. They want to have a party and they want a whole bunch of carts to move people around. And this one runs into the four to six time frame, which I know is not exactly the purpose of this one. But the one we brought to Billy here a while back is uh, I'm not, an, I, I have no interest to trailer vehicles. If I can't drive there, I'm not interested in doing it. It's too much work to trailer a vehicle, and most people aren't willing to pay what it costs to trailer a vehicle. So most of the, the requests we may make are, for instance, let's assume it's on the other side of uh, the golf place. Um, I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head now. Top. top golf. Let's assume it's right on the other side of there. There's an event space. I can drive there. It's close by. We would have interest in doing that. If it's way, way out that I've got a trailer vehicle, I'm not interested, it's just not worth my time to trailer vehicle. So most of the exceptions we're gonna have are probably within a mile, two miles at the most of a zone, and we're gonna try to find some way to get the vehicles there. Um, trailer if really have to, but it's, trailering is challenging. We get into situations where it's an Airbnb and they're one block out of zone or something like that, and we're having people walk over. Um, the only times we really have an interest in this is when it's like Destination Nashville, one of those kind of places that's scheduling something for a corporate event, and it's worth our time and effort very candidly to do it. It's usually not a pickup for one person. It's more of a shuttle service for a wedding. It's a corporate event where they're, <coughs> for instance, we did one with Destination Nashville where they were shuttling people around, trying to find event space, trying to find places to, to hold their shindig next year. Oops, sorry. Um, and they wanted us to shuttle them around various places uh, that sometimes are out of zone as well as maybe during operational times of four to six. That's where this comes into play for me and I can't speak for everyone, um, but that's that's where I see this is, is coming into, into this. Um, I've got one right now, March, I think of next year, where I know we've already got time and, and operational zone issues that uh, this will be uh, relevant. So it sounds like you're in favor of the rule addition, but perhaps you would want more than one exemption. Well, that's the tricky part. You know, this happens a couple times a year, and, and for me, it's, and I'm sure it's going to be the same for Joyride, most of it's probably corporate and or large group events. It's probably not for two people that just happen to be out of zone because I don't think either one of us are going to spend much time on two people that just happen to be out of zone. It's more a party of 50, it's 100, it's a corporate event, it's a shuttle service all day long for something that's going on. How many times a year do we have that? No clue. Um, I can tell you last year we probably had three or four of them and most of them I turned down uh, with the exception of one because um, I just didn't think there was a process in place to even consider getting it approved. Matter of fact, I told them when we brought it to the commission, I said 99.9% .9 chance it's going to get declined, but I'll put it in front of the commission. I was very candidly shocked it got approved. <laughs> to be really honest. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. You. Uh, next, we have uh, Eddie Garcia, who's requested to speak. Good evening, Eddie Garcia, Joyride. Uh, I'm not sure if Officer uh, Sergeant Smith wanted to speak before. I think they have roll call for these special events tonight. So I'm going to defer if, if you want to speak. I was going to speak on the next part. Of the I'm board. willing to defer to him since he's got roll call to make pretty soon. I think. Mr. Phillips and I spoke earlier, and uh, we spoke about giving uh, Joyride uh, reprieval for three months uh, to be able to utilize the hours between four and six. 
Um, we don't see an issue with that. Um, they promised me that they would uh, abide by all the rules and uh, they wouldn't be parking in the loading zones. So. Yeah. His request that we put together a three month pilot project for the low speed vehicles to be able to uh, operate uh, during the 79 and the four to six. So we'd basically uh, excuse for the, the 90 days evaluate to determine if there were any problems. Correct. And it would include all the low speed vehicles. In other words, we open the door for one would be all but correct. But, correct. In your, in your but that's actually the next issue, but it is it, approval. Correct. Are there any questions for the not to speak for the chair, but uh, you do have to go to roll call. Yes, sir. <laughs> Since you're calling the roll, it might be appropriate. <laughs> okay. Now now what is your what is your position or your function? Would, would I'm with even, special events. John and I are both work special events. Okay, so you, you would actually be directly involved. impacted and Correct. involved. Okay. Yes, and I've worked downtown for six, seven years. <coughs> okay. Any questions for Officer Smith? I, I, if, if I may, in terms of just low speed vehicles in general, uh, experience downtown. Have, have they been? Have you seen an improvement over the last several months, or have there never been any? I mean, you know, just generally speaking, what's your just low speed meaning the, the golf cart looking vehicles? Yeah, we haven't seen a whole lot of issues with them lately. It seems like actually they've uh, decreased the amount of what we've seen last year. I would say there was almost double the amount of golf carts on the road that there is now. Now we're seeing more of the party buses, the um, party tractors. Um, things of that nature. More transportation. Correct. You know, a year ago, or whenever it was that we were setting these uh, time restrictions, uh, Sergeant Bork thought it was a good idea and mm -hmm. really and very much wanted it because it would help the flow of traffic coming into town and traffic leaving town. Why the change of position from your perspective? Well, when Sergeant Bork said that, what he was referring to was everything had been plugged in under low speed vehicles, meaning the pedicabs, anything that couldn't go over 15 miles per hour. Well, the golf carts can go up to what, 18, I wanna say? That's fine, anything less than that, as far as when we're pulling traffic, can't keep up with traffic. So that's what causes the congestion. Um, so the golf carts were kind of a victim of the pedicabs and things of that nature that just can't keep up with the flow of traffic. And if this is gonna be a study, that's why it's been proposed as kind of a 90-day trial mm. study. Who's studying it? Who's, who's measuring whether traffic's impeded or not? Are you guys or? As far as MNP's concerned, we would be, we would see how many infractions and things of that nature was being incurred by the company, and then we would have to come in. Well, I'm more interested in if this is gonna be a study to see how traffic flows with the golf carts on the road. Who's going to who's going to come back and tell us, hey, we didn't find any any slowdown of traffic, or oh man, it was awful. We we need to go back to these regulations, these okay, time well, restrictions. Who's going to well, do maybe that? there was a mis misspoken because MNPD is does not have the right. ability to commit to some kind of study like that. Right. Um, what all we're doing is authorizing, saying MNPD is okay if you guys determine. That they're allowed to. I, I think the way it started, I think the, I, the request came to lift the restrictions. Mm -hmm. Then, then the thought from again outside the commission. This was not a commission idea. Was well, maybe we should look at it for 90 days to make sure the commission feels comfortable with it and come back. And a lot of it would have to be anecdotal because, again, to spend the money for a specific study on a specific industry for a 90-day period is probably not reasonable. What we would probably do is, if you ask us to do it, is we would observe. We would have our observations. The police department would be, because they're more motorized vehicles, there there's more interaction between the golf, between the low-speed vehicles on a daily basis, I think, than the others, because they are moving in traffic in a different pace with, with, with well, again, moving in traffic because they're providing transportation and not necessarily entertainment. I'm, so, just, I'm just curious who's going to come back to us and say, hey, it's working or it's not working. It'd be the police department and, and the staff, I think, is all we could come back with, and any complaints that came up through it. The, tr the traffic study that was um, undertaken earlier this year, uh, if I remember correctly, it was still recommending that we keep in place 
the hourly restriction and that included the low speed vehicles correct we've not seen the final study we anticipate you getting that at the september meeting i apologize it's taken as long as it has when we went when we when we spoke the last time the commission officially spoke on the study there was some desire to talk more with the industry which they've gone back done and they have now completed that and they're ready to present it back to the commission so i, I i'm not going to speak to the study because i don't have the study I, it's not been presented back to me in its final form and frankly I've, I, have, I have the same information that was presented that day is what was presented to y'all is what, what I had and that's not a written study of any kind well I, I think it makes a lot of sense then that we should be deferring uh, any decision to enter a pilot project until we hear back on the written study yeah. Well, I think we got two issues. We got one the issue of <laughs> it, it, because the, the the sergeants need to go. We we actually brought up a different top of, of the later public hearing topic. So it may be you want to hold that for just a second, and then I think finish the uh, yeah. You have yeah. two separate finish public hearing topics. Right. Finish the first yeah. one, yeah. and then if yeah. you wanted to defer, that would be certainly up to the commission to do what it chose to do on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Officer Smith. Um, thank, thank you for that. If we could jump back to the yes. first one. Thank you. Yes, and Mr. Fields is correct, just to, in deference to Sergeant Smith so that he can get to roll call. Uh, and I'll come back when we discuss that other item. Uh, on the operational, the ambiguity of what's written in the agenda, and I think Mr. Field, you did specify earlier. So it's resulting from last month's commission meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and as Mr. Winter said, I want to echo the same feeling. In most cases, Neither of our companies are going to surpass in this astronomical amount of requests. And as 673380 authorizes Mr. Fields to act on the behalf of the commission in lieu of the commission's vote, I think the cordiality between the two LSV companies and Mr. Fields, we can dictate if something is reasonably acceptable for us to even consider. And then as we've done in the past, we just confer with Mr. Fields and if if he dictates that it needs to come to the commission, that's his authorization to do so. Um, but if it's expanding from what the zone is, notwithstanding the streets that are restricted, but we're talking about the zone, as you all discussed in the November 2015 meeting with Mr. Fields and Mr. Sizemore from Joyride, um, I think it would dictate, if you could, in deference to the companies, and we're all adults, to be able to deal with Mr. Fields and say, Hey, we've got an event. It's a wedding. It's a corporate event, as Mr. Winter said. Uh, we certainly, from a business standpoint, we're not going to entertain all of them. And we're not going to take up your time to bring needless or ridiculous requests outside of what we normally do in business. But I think if you could, if this is a proposal to just review what came up at last month's meeting, um, that you continue discussing it and not act on it. Uh, and just allow us to continue dealing with 673380 and Mr. Fields. And if it gets exorbitant to that point, then you can bring it back to the table and say, hey, it's getting out of hand. Then I think it would be apropos to bring it up and discuss, you know, we've got more. But if we were going to enact a number, I don't know, I'll just throw a Las Vegas number out of the hat, go four per month. That's 50 a year with the two weeks extra and 52 year calendar. But I don't think we could get there if we would go four a month. If you're going to put an exact max amount but if we can backtrack the no pun intended the lsv or the cart allow us to confer with mr fields hey we've got a wedding coming up in a month and last month we all discussed the wedding off trinity lane and i'm glad the police off the police department said there's no problem um i think we have the wherewithal and the ability to to kind of see that and say mr fields we would by telephone or by email and just say this is an opportunity that we have and if it's feasible to do then let's do it if it's not we're willing to step up to the plate and not even bring it to mr fields because it just doesn't make sense for anybody we certainly want to adhere to public safety and not congest the roads that they're already congested with fedex ups trucks semi trucks scooters it's coming up in commission in council meeting next week we want to just be good responsible business operators and bring it to Mr. Field's attention. And that's on when it, if it comes to that operational exception policy. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. Fields, how do you feel about that? And I I never mind working with the companies as part of my my job is to be open to them coming in. I I'm, I'm not there as their advisor, or their their guider or, or anything, but what we do want to do is, is let them work 
and protect the public safety. The issues we always have on special events, and we've certainly talked about it with them. And you know, with with anything we do, the first thing we we have to always do is say, does it create any kind of a public safety problem? If it's some, and so I guess the straightforward answer is I'm happy to uh, work with. Again, we have created an application. Uh, what we could do is use this request, ask them to fill that out. I could continue to review them. Those that I thought made sense for me to, to talk with the police department, talk to follow the same policy that we do now. We talk to traffic and parking, we talk to the police. Assuming that they don't see any problems, then we would say, okay, here's what you can do, and then give them authority to do that. And if there are problems that exist after that, then obviously we wouldn't. Again, Ms. Warren and I spoke about it a lot. She may have some thoughts as Yeah, well. I was just about to ask you, Ms. Warren, if you had uh, specific thoughts you wanted to add. Billy has touched on, on most of them. I remember one of the comments that was made at our last meeting about, you know, if we start approving these, then where does it stop? And I have to say, when, and I know he was just using an anecdotal example, but when he said four per month, so maybe 50 a year, well, there are two companies and, you know, how does that start impacting if we start letting them go to different areas and you know, thinking about those neighborhoods and I just feel like it's almost like a Pandora's box that you're opening them up if you just allow them to continually ask for those exceptions. And, and I, I want to believe that he is correct, we're all adults and that they would not take advantage of that, but those zones were put in place for a reason. You know, that's what the study Correct. had recommended and you know for safety reasons and so I'm, I'm hesitant to just allow an open season for lack of a better word on exceptions for them to drive out of the zone right but I think we're talking about allowing mr. F mr. fields to mm -hmm. use his tenure and expertise in the amount of of, of time and uh, and and the amount of requests, being that uh, he's we're we're here once a month. He's in his office every day. And I trust his judgment oh. on it. I don't think they would all need to come before us if we want to make that alteration. That's just what was spoken at the last meeting. But then I'm also thinking of Billy's time where he's, you know, again I think they're probably understaffed as it is. And if that's just and again, it may only be one a month, and if that's the case, it's not bad, but... Historically, it is a few a year. It's three, I mean, I would say if we had... Well, we didn't have 10 last year. I, I don't recall what the number was. They, they're they pretty judicious in what they asked for. I think the biggest request that they would have are, are, are the special event issues that, that we don't really have much authority over. But, you know, for CMA, that's a that's a really big deal. <coughs> Unfortunately, traffic is so snarled and streets are so closed that it's nearly impossible to function in the downtown area in, from, an, from, a from a transportation standpoint, running shuttles and such, unless you're allowed into the CMA. So, again, I think it's two different I guess you got several different kind of things cooking I guess what I'm asking can we do this can we then set uh, a number that once it exceeds that at your request that it be brought before the board once that number is exceeded you said there were 10 last year so if it gets above 10 anything above 10 then has to come before the board. And I, again, I just threw that number out. I'm not sure it was actually that high, but but I understand what you're saying that that you'd have ten, but but because I don't when you, you know, got to eleven, it has to come to the commission right, for approval. It, in the same sense, in that um, we are deferring some to your judgment that you're already using, and it does uh, it it does take up unneeded time for the commission. It, not trying to make your job any more than it is. I know you work hard. But if you're already doing it and it's not an exorbitant number, that it only be brought before us when that number exceeds that. I like that idea. There's no rule issue with that, I don't get Can I ask Metro, Metro Legal a question first? Um, is there any concern when there would be a denial of an exception? A denial being made by Mr. Field versus a denial being made by the commission after a full hearing. I'm not sure that the rule actually spells this out, but I would nevertheless opine that if there is a denial by Mr. Fields and the applicant is not willing to accept that denial, 
that you would be willing to entertain that in the form of an appeal um, just so that that applicant then if they became dissatisfied with the commission's decision on appeal then they would have the opportunity to um, further um, appeal that to the Chancery Court by writ of um, certiorari. So if Mr. Fields denied it then it would come to us and then they could go to Chancery Court. Yes. And they would not be able to go to Chancery Court directly from a denial from Mr. Fields, most likely. It, it would be better to have it yeah. come before you all in, as an interim step, I would say. We, we share some authority, but I always see that my authority defers to you in terms of appeal. I think, yeah, I think he would probably be more comfortable oh, with that as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I think anything, if, I, if it's something that I say no to that you could say yes to, some things we have no, we have, there's certain things that there's no, that the law says what can happen. In a case like this, it'd be a question of the commission listening to me say, here's why I said no, versus, and then you would say, yes, I agree, or no, I don't, grant it. More, no more than someone coming before the podium. Absolutely. Anyway. So, be incumbent upon the companies to make their application early enough for Mr. Fields to consider it, and then if he denied it, to get to before the commission. We don't like to keep applications laying on the desk. It's it's our advantage to move it as quickly as we can, because there's other things that need to be done. So what what would you uh, what would you think? You said you threw ten out there. What would you think would be a number that that uh, the board should consider once? Um, just, j just as a general question. Well, in, in listening to Mr. Winters speak, and I, again, I don't want, I'm trying not to speak for anybody other than me, is, you know, he said it four or five, and then I hear four months, so I mean, it's somewhere in the middle. I think it's reasonable, I think 10's maybe a reasonable number to start with and see what happens. If we get above 10, then they, we're no different then than we are now, then it comes back to the commission automatically if it gets to 11. Would you set a certain number per company or just a general number in. I think you do per company because yeah. their business is different. I think some might have three or four. And again, some models, uh, Mr. Winter said he does not want to uh, uh, ever trailer his vehicles. I know for certain because Mr. Sizemore and I talked today about trailering vehicles, and he's very comfortable trailing, trailering vehicles, at least in certain circumstances. I and I will speak for him on that. <laughs> I would think the number would have to be the same for each company. Yeah, it'd be 10. I mean, if 10 was the number, that each one would have 10, so there could be a total of 20 exceptions. Uh, when one company reached their 10, it would come. If the other one was still at five, then it would. they would still have their other five to ask of me or our office. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like well, to make well, a Oh, sorry. Gotta, I'm sorry. We've got to close the public hearing. I apologize. Um, so at this time, we'll close the public hearing on the review of a rule for low-speed vehicles uh, having an operational area exception policy. Mr. Farr. I'd like to make a motion to defer that decision to Mr. Field's office with a limit of 10 per company within a calendar year and that any appeal to his decision be brought before the board or must be brought before the board and that any uh, proceeding request over that 10 also be brought to the board for consideration. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. Uh, now we move on to formally to a public hearing on a, uh, a review to allow low speed vehicles to operate during rush hour as part of a um, pilot project for 90 days. Um, during our public hearing for the low speed vehicle operational area exception policy, we touched on this a bit, uh, heard from some members of the public on this issue. I have received uh, two additional, uh, actually Mr. Winter has already spoke, so I've, I've received two additional requests to speak on this issue. So if I haven't said it already, we're going to open the public hearing on the request to allow low-speed vehicles to operate during rush hour uh, during a 90-day pilot project. Uh, Mr. Sizemore. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Chris Sizemore. I'm the founder of Jorah Nashville. Um, I just want to touch on a couple of subjects between the four and six. Um, Jorah, since inception, sent 3.6 million rides. Um, 
We're on track to do 1.2 million just this year with our new NASCAR fleet. We have 36 cars that travel to every NASCAR track um, throughout the year, so it's a weekly thing to transport patrons and, and for their special events. Um, you know, after after starting starting Jorad, I spoke with Billy about putting the regulations into place because it's something that was needed. And once the regulations were put in put into place, the problem was there was a lot of fights going on between pedal taverns and things like that. So we were kind of grouped into that study. And even KCI came up and and said at the beginning that the study did not include LSVs at all whatsoever. So the boundaries that were put in place and, and everything else was technically for the pedal bars. Um, we, we've been trying to work with KCI and, and meeting with them. They had no idea the amount of phone calls we had. They, they had no idea. They just thought we just drove around and picked people up. And then after we gave them that data, I mean, even KC, KCI came back and said, I don't know why they voted on. You weren't even the topic. So were you the, uh, are you referring to the more recent study done this year? Are you the, talking the, about the, the one from? The first one. The first yeah, one. the first one. So the fir this, I'm really interested in the second one that was conducted this year. I know there was some initial results um, uh, and an initial um, uh, study that was presented to us, and then I think we urged him to communicate with you and yeah. the other members of, of the low-speed uh, vehicle communities to find out and get input directly from the companies. Have, has that happened, and do you know t preliminarily what those results are? The results were that they were telling us that we're providing a, a much needed service for Nashville. Um, you know, they had no idea what their, before the second meeting that came, that they came out with, they had never met with us until we said, hey, we, you know, we never met with anybody. So they, we have finally met with them and none of the results are gonna come out. The only issue is, is we, we've come into a crossroads where we don't have any more time at all. We're gonna have to shut down. I mean, we've had two other companies close their doors. We've had petty cab squad of business. We've overregulated us to the point where, you know, we're missing 100,000 calls a year between the times we're shut down. I mean, those are people that need rides here in Nashville. I mean, 14 million people broke records here in Nashville, and they need rides for the hotels, and they need public transportation. That's why the scooters are so popular now. So what's going to happen is between 4 and 6 and 7 and 9, if we can't give someone a ride, they're just going to take a scooter. And then there's going to be another death or another hit when instead of having a trained driver be able to take these people to different places. Um, <clears throat> just between the time periods of, of the shutdown, you know, it's about 38% to 40% of our business. Uh, the other issue is, is that the people that used to work for us, we had some great people, can't afford to make minimum wage anymore to even do this anymore. So, you know, they've all quit. We went from 150 drivers that were making supplemental incomes to now 50. And, you know, turnover's high just because most of the calls do come in between those the shutdowns. Those are the people that need, they're using us when they get off the train in the morning between seven and nine. They need a ride to work. Um, these are the people that are utilizing underutilized parking areas, the the free parking streets in Hawkins and, and a couple of other streets that people don't know about. It's the construction workers that get there early. And the problem is that we do take a lot of those people do work to work exactly at nine, and then we can't pick them back up between four and six when they're getting off. So the, the, the issue is, is, is that we can't reschedule your meeting times. We can't reschedule your dinner times. We can't reschedule a send. We can't reschedule birthday parties. We can't reschedule any of these things. This is a public convenience to give people transportation. And that's the only thing we, we want to do here, is provide a public transportation option for these people. And, and it's just, it's not there anymore, completely. I mean, it, it, the time periods that we're actually operating are the people, the, technically the times that people don't need rides. And, it, it, you know, when people get off work, the restaurants, that's where people go for happy hours. It's between four and six. Um, you know, we're putting more drunk drivers on the roads. I mean, you know, that's what we're trying to solve. <laughs> In my mind, a pedal bar or a pedal tavern is an opportunity-based business. We can reschedule any, any one of their tours. It's fine. That's not even a problem. But we can't reschedule your dinner party or your Ascend concert or your Ryman concert. We can't reschedule what's going on here in Nashville. The problem with the, the special events is coming, having the time frame to be able to come in front of you too. The Titans just called me a couple days ago. Hey, you want to do some transportation over the bridge and shuttle can't handle it? We need help. Yes, I can, but we can't between four and six. And we only had a couple of days. Uh, I spoke with Billy and he approved the ones that are on property, but the problem is, is that they want us to do shuttle service 
during game day. And between four and six, the game's at seven tonight, and we can't run yet. So we have a contract in place. The problem is, is those people, the people call us and we're like, can you help us? Yes, we can. And then you want to see a contract, but the problem is, is we don't want to tell someone we can help you, we can help you with your event, because we get four or five a month. I mean, it's just weddings. People call the venue downtown, and it's the bridge building, and they book a wedding, and you know they have problems with transportation, or there's a, they don't want to use a bus, or they want to be taken away. So those special events are just, it's not things that we're looking for. These are people just calling us just they need transportation. That's, they're they're going to have to either get a bus or a van or, or some other mode of transportation. And if you think of us, just think of us as a public transit system. Would you shut down the buses between four and six? Would you shut down taxis between four and six? Would you shut down the interstates between four and six? And our, our trained drivers are, are trained not to be on the routes that are going to the interstates. During between those three and six, or the four and six and seven and nine, we stay away from the inlets and the exits to Nashville because we don't want to be in those anyways. So we'll take side streets, 11th. I mean, we'll just take any side street we possibly can. And you know, I just, I just want y'all to think of us as something that's trying to help the city. I mean, whenever we're helping Ascend, when Ascend's coming in, and all, all of these places that are keep growing here in Nashville, all the restaurants that we drop them off, we drop them off at 4, we need to pick them up at 5.30, because that was time, what time their dinner's over. Those people now either have to do a, t a taxi, a lift, an Uber, or something, if they're going one block. And then the taxis don't want that. They don't want the short runs. So they want the longer runs. So, you know, um, I think we, we spoke to the police officers, and they said, you know, I think they got us confused. We were not talking about low-speed vehicles when we talked about restricting them. It was slow-moving vehicles. And that's why they came to us and said, we'd like to, and we, we don't mind working a deal out with you. I mean, a trial run is perfectly fine with us. You know, the, the traffic study showed that we went three miles an hour less than, than normal traffic downtown. I can speed my car up three miles an hour, and then we can be the exact same, but I do it for safety reasons. And I mean, GPS in the carts. The other thing is we have an application we spent 150 grand on. We can utilize that app to make sure that our drivers aren't just crisscrossing across town to go pick someone up. The problem is, is that we use our app in our multiple cities. We have five or four cities that we're opening in right now that we use our application. We'd like to be able to utilize it here because it'd be more advantageous instead of calling a number and getting somebody from the other side of town to come get you, then there's a driver right next door. So we'd like to utilize that for one, for data. I mean, the other thing is just to keep the carts off the streets because then they can pull over and stop. Right now we try to make everybody come back to our office because if, you're, if you pull over on the side of the street and you wait for four to six, people are going to hop on the cart, somebody's going to take a picture and we're going to get in trouble. And we, that's another issue you have that um, people not making it to the exact point where the drop off needs to happen exactly at four. It's because you know the traffic in Nashville, things happen. You pick somebody up at 3.30 and you think you're going to make it there by four and it, all of a sudden time ran out and, and now we're in trouble for not dropping somebody off four and a half minutes past the time that we were, weren't allowed to be on the road. Even though my driver could have dropped those off and pulled over and, and would have been, I mean, my guys try to stay out of traffic. We don't want to be in traffic more than anybody else. We don't get paid anything extra for being in traffic like a Lyft or an Uber. Um, so yeah, we would like to use, utilize our app and if we can get our four, restric four to six restriction, we can utilize the app and, and you know, it'd be more advantageous for everybody and, and keep traffic down and, and, and help out the city of Nashville. Um, I actually have call reports if anybody sees them, and you can actually see the. If I, you want to pass them out, or well, could I ask a question about the app? Would, during this 90-day period, would you be willing to share uh, some of the GPS information? Again, I'm not asking for full access. So what I'm just basically saying is, I'd like to, during this period, like to see what's happened through between seven and nine and four and six. Just at least anecdotally, here's where here's where we're getting a majority. For instance, you yeah. mentioned the Music City Star. That you know we're getting 35. Uh, rides a day from the Music City Star in yep. the morning. We're getting another 65 in the afternoon going back to the Music City Star. Or, again, just as, yep. as a way, because one of the things you asked, well, what, how can we quantify it? Well, we, we, again, we don't have the kind of money to, yep. to be spent, but what we have what we do at the commission office is we try to be creative with what we do have and utilize those things we have. An intelligent justification, I which like is... That which idea of where you would present it from data of during, if we did approve this study, so that the, the, you would actually produ produce some data showing to, to Mr. Fields and he could report to us of, of where you're picking up and how you really are being a public service and public transportation and yeah. not just commuting well, tourists we, from the hotel to the restaurant. We could do that after the study. The problem is, is that we wouldn't want to launch that unless we're going to guarantee that people, I mean, mm -hmm. we have to put money and effort in, towards that, with that trial period. 
We don't want to push that as hard as we possibly well, can. Well, then why penalize us with this, with this app if you're not going to be doing it and giving us some data? Oh, I mean, if, so. if the restriction is lifted, I'd be great. I'd be, yes, I would give the data. That's not an issue. But the problem is there's going to be a trial run that it can be revoked after that period. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to give you whatever data anybody needs. I mean, we have... Explain to me why you can't use the app for the times that you're already approved. It has to be the app. Ha so whenever somebody requests a ride, the app has to be rewrote. So they have to rebuild the entire application for it to restrict just those times in that specific area in that specific time. And it's, uh, ex from what the developers say, it's complete rewrite. So, so it's a complete different app you have to have. I would put it in my language. It'd be a bait and switch if they were to put the app in and you hit it at 4:15, it's dead. And there's the customer pressing the button saying, "I want to ride, but I can't give it to you between four and six. Yeah. So the app would have to go back in and say, "I'm sorry, we're not available for service between four yeah. and six. So what it would say is during the so. Is that again? Yes. I end up speaking for you more today than I ever have. It's okay. It's okay. And I mean, I think you understand. I think you understand the, app the concept. Right now, in your other three cities, hmm? and you're using the app, the app right now in your correct. Other three we don't cities. even take phone calls in some of our other cities. We, it's an application only because we'd like to go that that way anyways. And technically, we I mean, you could just become a ride share service at that point, um, just like Lyft or Uber. What three, I mean, what three cities? Uh, Knoxville, Tuscaloosa, and Birmingham. We've got. 22 vehicles in Tuscaloosa. Um, <coughs> I think we have 11 in, in Knoxville. And you're, and you're representing, <coughs> Mr. Sizemore, that the revised vehicle study that we're going to be getting in the next few weeks is going to recommend that low-speed vehicles be able to operate during the restricted hours? That I don't know. I know he just told us when after he met, he's like, I didn't, I've never knew y'all even had any kind of data at all. I mean, this is the first time we're ever hearing of this. And, and every time I try to communicate with them now after the, after we met, there's just no communication at that point. So I think they're busy doing the traffic study for the, the new stadium. Um, but, you know, soccer. Oh. Our peak times for phone calls, which is the problem is, is either we answer the phone and say, hey, sorry, we can't do it, or we just don't answer the phone at all between 4 and 6. So if the restriction is lifted, you can use the app? Yes. And that data will be shared directly? Yes. But only if, only if it's... the trial period. So there would be no information for us. I'm sorry. Well, uh, no, we no, just, we're talking about during the trial yeah, period. Yeah, we can do it during the trial period. We're just not going to push the app heavily between that time oh, okay. period. So, so and that's fine. Yes, period. and I could give that data. That's not that's not even that's not the issue. I just I want good data for you. I want y'all to see quantifiable data. Like our phone calls, I mean, when you're getting seventy, a hundred thousand calls a month, I mean a year. Those are people that need rides. The problem is phone calls don't tell me what the purpose of the ride is. You know, and I'm looking for, as you've been speaking or advocating, that your public transportation. Yeah. I'm not just interested in someone going from the Hyatt over to the next restaurant or making down to the Ryman. I want to know how you're really moving people who are going from the Star to their place of employment. Okay. It, it's just going to be a bunch of dots, with, but that's fine. I'm, it's going to be a bunch of dots with, with GPS locations going here and there to show the routes and things like that, mm -hmm. but that's, that's not a problem with me. And I, I'd like to see your call information. You said okay. you have yeah. to. Okay, yeah. Can I ask a counter question, Ted? When Mr. Fields said 7 and 9, the previous conversation, I thought we were just on 4 to 6. Are we opening the idea or the opportunity to <laughs> add both time frames as well? I thought we were just addressing the four to six. Yeah. But we're uh, we're amenable to the every so. morning to give the perfect data that you all want. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense to not have it, seven and nine because it was, then it makes the app it was unusable my, at that point. It was my impression, obviously I could have been confused, it was my impression we'd consider uh, lifting restrictions for a ninety day period both morning and evening in order to give a good snapshot of does this improve, does it does it improve the experience of folks trying to move in downtown and, and does it fulfill their obligation as a as a certificate holder to uh, provide public transportation? Yeah, I was rushing with the graph when I came in, so they're actually side by side. And as you see, this you know the four to six is our peak, and then after six it starts to go down. After that. Um, Yeah, so the missed calls, what we're trying to do now is just forward them to a voicemail or, or we have an automated phone call that says, 
between that time says that we're shut down between that time. Just people just keep calling over and over and over again. And the problem is, is whenever you're receiving that many phone calls a day, it's it's difficult to. And then you people you have people upset at you because people you dropped off at one particular location you can't pick back up. 10 seconds later, um, just because maybe it wasn't communicated or maybe you didn't know those people needed a ride back. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, sharing that data is, is perfectly fine with me. And we still have GPS data too, so we can so still... Let me ask you something. You expressed earlier, and the officer did as well, he expressed a reduction in the amount of carts that he's seen. Yes. From, and, and you expressed that that happened uh, because of loss of... of in, so, in essence, uh, you might possibly, if the restriction is lifted, go back up to your 150 vehicles because no, of the a, increase of service. We have the same amount. Do. We have 30, 32 permits. Right. We have 150, 150 drivers. 150 drivers. 150 yeah. drivers. Sorry. I'm sorry. 100, you go back up to that full capacity that you're not at now. So what happens during the week is, well, if we use the application, our drivers won't have to be driving around trying to get rides. It would just be rides that people requested on the app application for one. The, the other thing is, is um, during the week, Monday through Friday, you know, we have a low amount of drivers that come in anyways, because, just because of the call amount, which is, I mean, you just staff accordingly. You just don't have all 50 drivers or 150 drivers come in every day. I mean, on Monday through, Monday through Thursday, we might have 10. I mean, in 10 golf carts downtown, you, I mean, you might see one every f few minutes, but it's, it's, not, it's not that overwhelming. And we wouldn't, we're going to have the same amount of drivers. The problem is the quality of driver, too. Somebody will be able to make a full wage and not have to go home between 4 and 6, because the problem is technically you have to be able to throw it at 3.30, and, and you can't pick somebody up to about 6.05, 6.06, so that, you know, three-hour break is something that people just go home. They're just like, I, I don't care anymore. Um, but the consistency, the quality of driver will increase. I mean, th these are all things that, that um, would only help Nashville. I mean, the number of people needing rides isn't, isn't decreasing. Our phone calls are increasing. <clears throat> and then we asked for the permits for a public necessity, and I believe that, that we're showing a, a, very, a very bad necessity for, for these short rides. All right, well, Mr. Sizemore, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, um, Kenneth Ross. With uh, <clears throat> Kenneth Ross Music City Golf Carts, we're a lot smaller operation than Joyride, obviously, but um, we have the same issues that they do keeping quality drivers. I've got one guy who's probably the best driver we've ever had, but he comes in from an hour out of town and basically just sits in his car for two hours. But we've lost other drivers the same way. I think. So quality is one thing. Um, I don't think that the LSVs should have been lumped in with the other vehicles, so I'm in agreement there. Um, four to six is extremely confusing to customers and hotels and clients, and it's really damaging to our business. It's our, our financial capability or even sustainability is drastically affected us more in the four to six than seven to nine. But uh, Mr. Ross, did you have an opportunity also to uh, participate yes. in the conversation with the uh, second Same. traffic study that was yes, done earlier I did. this year? Yes, I And my impression that they were that? they were on the same wavelength as us with the for, with, with the restrictions on the time, and that's my impression that I got from them. And you know they were they were very good. You know, I'm, I was hoping the study would have been done maybe by this point, but um, I would I would ask that. The commission consider, given that the police have said they're okay with it, releasing the restriction as of now for 90 days, and then Joyride can hand their data in. The police can come back, and we can revisit the whole thing. Are we going to have the road. results from the traffic study, the revised traffic study, by the end of the 90 days if we were to grant? Oh, absolutely. But the, we'll have the. Uh, the KCI's report is, uh, I, th I think it's ready, and I've asked them to be prepared to present it to you at the September meeting. Once one of the issues, I was going to ask you if we could make it. The, your your agendas have been so full, it's been almost impossible to find a spot for it. But I think I think now that they've completed it, it's time to go ahead and bring it. So I, th I think that do it again. Yeah, I think the cruising would probably be in agreement as well. I've talked to Michael, and uh, you know he can speak for himself as well. But it, it would. KCI. 
be of benefit, I believe, to the community as well as the service industry, such as hotels and quality of drivers and financial sustainability of the companies if we could start the 90 days as of now and revisit it 90 days down the road. And I appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you, Mr. Ross. And it's good that people like Joyride are doing more advanced studies. We don't have the budget for that, but I'm glad that they're taking it on. So, all right, thank you. All right, and Mr. Winters, I believe you got to speak earlier. Do you have anything to add? Just a couple, two cents. Right. Um, we have GPS on all of our carts. They will track pickup, drop-offs, how long you stop at every location. We don't use an app. I, I don't see a lot of need for it personally for the simple reason most people aren't going to download an app for three days in Nashville, so that's why we don't use it. But I have GPS data that can tell you anything you want to know. Um, and something else to think about, when you're opening the four to six, you're really only opening an hour. For the simple reason, our drivers are probably driving back at 4.30. They're going out at 5.30. Uh, there's about an hour the vehicles that aren't actually on the road. Um, just being honest. Uh, they don't have passengers during those times, but they're staging. Uh, at 5.30, they head out to stage for 6. At 4 o'clock, they're dropping off. They're rolling back to the office at 4.30 or hanging out at McDonald's or whatever it is. So they're transitioning somewhere 30 minutes plus or minus on either side of that. So you're really only opening up about an hour. The vehicles aren't on the road, to be very candid. The morning time hours, I could care less about. I don't have a single request for morning time hours unless it's a special event. Uh, personally, I can't speak for other companies. Um, but the four to six definitely is a crunch. Um, now, as far as sales goes, very candidly, we're 40% up over last year. We haven't lost a nickel as, as, uh, as related to your ordinance. It is a pain in the butt. Yes, it is. Uh, I have drivers got to sit somewhere for two hours. That part's not so fun, but it hasn't hurt revenue. Um, very candidly, but it, would it make it easier on drivers? They don't have to sit at McDonald's for two hours. Absolutely. Are you losing drivers? No. As a result of the no restrictions, we just have daytime and nighttime drivers, and we have a couple that will sit for two hours and read a book and then go back to work. But we have people that just day shift, night shift. They, we've changed our scheduling, our process, and our drivers have changed. We've we, they've been forced to. They either sit for two hours and read a book, or they work a day shift or a night shift. So we've. Uh, out of adaptation change because we had to. Now, I will say I agree with everybody else. At the traffic study, uh, the gentleman I talked to was very candidly, this probably shouldn't have affected you. Uh, and, he, and he looked at me and said, if you got four to six back, would that satisfy you? Assuming nothing about the boundaries change. And of course, I said yes. So I think he will represent that four to six should be open, in my opinion. Um, the boundaries was all another question, but thanks. Thank you. All right, have you not received it? Mr. Garcia, do you want to speak on this issue as well? Yes, if I could. I won't belabor what Mr. Sizemore said. I'll just add some additional factual data just to help the commission. Um, but before I get into that, I don't know, I'm sure I'm not the first one who's ever said it. It's very difficult to hear you all from the back. Um, and as you all know, the scooters is coming up to council next week. And I think as somebody mentioned, it's another unfunded mandate and it's putting a stress on the police department. You all were talking about how do we fund or how do y'all fund? We're all in this big, huge table sitting, the convention center, hotels, everyone else. Instead of initially siphoning or taxing operators more, if we all could sit at the big table, I mean, the article that came out uh, six and a half billion dollars in visitor spending in 2017 alone, all shared by all parties. So as you all confer about this, maybe if we can entertain bringing everyone to the table, I think everybody chips in. We can hire several officers that are specifically assigned to the TLC to do what you all need to do. I think everybody should be in agreement with that. Um, with respect to the seven, nine and four to six, as Chris said, the app that we have and we do use and will use quite effectively. I've had an opportunity to chat with uh, Major Strange at Belmont, Chief Labby at Vandy, Mr. Bland at the MTA. In the event that we were able to do this, can we as a company provide this transportation service, not entertainment service, to these additional members of our community? I'm meeting with both respective chiefs next week. And Mr. Bland said we will meet with the MTA if the opportunity arises so that we can provide the transportation from a stop, train, or bus to wherever that individual needs to work, providing they work downtown uh, and that we stay within the zone. Um, but with respect to the four to six and, and we open it up, I just want to remind the commission, I've had the pleasure or the displeasure, depending on how you look at it and what day it is, to view over 27 hours of TLC meetings. And at the October 
27, 2016 meeting, Mr. Murphy of KCI at 5 minutes 53 said verbatim, because golf carts or LSVs travel at a higher speed than those included in the study as SMVs, we are not including SLVs in our study. And I think Mr. Sizemore, Mr. Winters, and Mr. Ross reiterated that Mr. Murphy won't mention that in this subsequent study. At 1350, Mr. Murphy also added that we are only limiting this study to SMVs, the pedal cabs and the horse carriages, not the golf carts. And to conclude, Sergeant Burke, as, as Sergeant Smith said today, at 2452, Sergeant Burke for MMPD said, we're only concerned about SMVs. The SLVs we can dictate and tell them as law enforcement officers move and people will comply or you're going to face the wrath of a law enforcement officer. So I think if we open that up with the study and you see the results of the study, you'll see that we are providing transportation to Nashvillians and tourists and providing a, a very suitable need for those people that will use our transportation. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. At this point in time, we'll close the public hearing on the uh, our review to to allow low-speed vehicles to operate during rush hours and uh, open it up for deliberation. Well, I would like to say, I, I guess, given with anything, uh, uh, as, as things go on, we, we, we need to adapt, we need to reassess uh, we need to take all the information that's given to us and apply it uh, to what's best for public necessity. Um, we do not have the second low speed uh, traffic data. Uh, I do believe Mr. Fields said by the time if we consider this 60 day trial, we would be able to put both the data together to consider was this uh, a, a viable or ongoing thing that we should do to allow this temporary ban uh, to maybe be permanent. Um, and, and, and I think that's a fair consideration. Um. Well, if, if Mr. Garcia is correct, and I'm not doubting his citations, it appears that we're not going to be getting uh, traffic study information that pertains strictly to low-speed vehicles. It will, it, will, it will include, I think they'll be included. I think you may hear, I think they're going to share new information with you that they've gathered because they did talk with all of them. So I think there'll be additional information provided. But I, but I, I think Commissioner Carr is accurate. If you agree to the 90 days, basically it would be September, October, November at the December meeting, that will have been, we will have gathered, we'll gather information, we will have had the study, um, we'll have the, the KCI report, and then we will have that data that we've gathered. So we could use between now and, uh, and Thanksgiving more or less, we'll gather that data, and then, uh, and I'd basically let them operate, if you're going to approve it, I'd let them operate through the commission meeting in December. And then I would bring, come back at the December meeting and share what we found. And you could either continue to uh, allow uh, rule number six of the low speed vehicle rules to stay in place regarding the time, or you could vacate that rule, uh, modify or vacate the rule. I think that would close a lot of uh, deliberation in this constantly being revisited because uh, we've visited this several times uh, and uh, you know the companies are expressing how it, it hurts their business the, the, the companies that have gone out of business uh, the need for necessity I believe with the data at that time being that Mr. Sizemore said the only way he could give us that data or that it would be viable for him to use uh, that app uh, to provide us with that valuable data would be that we would lift this and, and I think it's worth that 90 day period to be able to take that data, put it with the study and put this baby to bed so to speak and that either uh, that time slot is not viable and not a public necessity or that it actually is. I make a motion that we lift rule six for the low speed vehicles through the December meeting. What date is that, Mr. Fields? It's the second Thursday in, in uh, December. Well, I'll just say 
we lift rule six for the low speed vehicles through to the December meeting and then take the matter up at that time as to whether we keep it in force or not. Okay. I second that motion. Uh, and now, and we also want to make sure that it's a condition of that is that um, we will receive the data that's been promised to us by Mr. Sizemore. Sure. So, I now second that motion. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. The, Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman, I need to caution you. We're at uh, five minutes to four. The there are there are going to be traffic restrictions. are going to be getting. We're in a we're in a very challenging position at this point with this meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I understand. Uh, do we have enough time to go through some of the driver applications, or are these going to? Be rather, uh, well, I, th I think most of them are going to be pretty speedy when it comes to the drivers. I think, I think the disciplinary issues are going to be, uh, or the complaints are, are a different issue. Okay. Mr. Blackman. Mr. Chairman, in light of uh, Mr. Fields' comment, we have, we have nine, I believe, citations here. Uh, three of those I've suggested we withdraw. I wanted to speak briefly about the, the. Uh, having a private security company which directly addresses some of the things we've discussed and uh, I have some photographs having to do with horse safety. I would be willing to have all of the citations because of the time of day and the traffic and it's a Titans game tonight if you call a preseason game a game. Uh, <laughs> we can uh, move that I believe the 20th is that not the, the third Thursday in September? I, I believe 20, yes. it's the fourth, it'll be the fourth Thursday. In normally the means are the fourth Thursday. It'll be the 27th. Uh, September meeting will be the 27th. Well, I, I, I think that might be prudent. I, I don't want to, you to feel pressed by these. Most of what we have from our side are just videos of very specific things anyway. But, well, we're certainly willing okay. to. And there's also a point that I think Metro Legal needs to make. They, they want to make two points. And one of them is an issue about how we deal with, with complaints and disciplinary. So it may fit in uh, in a strange way altogether. All right. All right. So if that pleases the commission, we can uh, we don't we won't object to that. I would like to speak very briefly to these other two matters. Okay. But I, I, if we can, I think it's appropriate to move through the drivers if we can. I don't, I think all of them are going to be qualified. It's a matter of, of they all qualify if the commission approves them. And we have one add-on that I spoke with the chair about. Were these uh, applicants who just failed to disclose mm -hmm. this stuff? Uh, or have, have issues that, um, that there's just, They've self-disclosed several issues that, that y'all have interest in, so that we'd bring. And Mr. Mooneyham has asked that it defer, so one of the, the, the second record driver wants to move, so we could call these if you like. Sorry, but they'd be time. Uh, <laughs> please time me, please. He said that he has to defer to that. Yeah, Mr. Mooneyham has asked to defer. All right, well, let, well, let's go to about 410, so that gives us about 10 minutes here. Mr. Hoffman, Derek Hoffman. Derek Hoffman. Mr. Hoffman was, uh, missed the July meeting. We deferred to this meeting. Uh, moved to deny the application. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. And then Mr. Mooneyham is wanting to move defer to, to September. September. All right. Kelly Morse. Kelly J. Morse. Mr. Uh, Kelly Morris also was on the July agenda and was not present. Yeah. Or I think may have asked, actually, that may have been the one that was sick and asked to move. <coughs> but anyway, was supposed to be on July and moved to this meeting. She's not present here either? No. I make a motion to dismiss. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Robert Rutherford. Okay, now let's get to Mr. Rutherford. How y'all doing? Hello. All right. 
in making his uh, in making his application, he self-disclosed uh, several charges. None of them would keep him from. Uh, none of them automatically disqualify him. Most of them were not new. So we asked him to come and be available to the commission. So he just disclosed them all. It's just the yes volume. There was. Um, Are you currently working at a record service in some capacity? Uh, I used to work with Cotton's Towing, which is part of Tobro. Um, that was years ago. Uh, I've been trying since then to get my records permit, but um, when I very first heard of the commissioner's office, um, I wasn't familiar on how to list the items. But after talking with Shannon at Tobro, she explained to me the procedure and how to do it, and that's when I tried it again this time, and now I'm finally here. Topro offering you a job if you're approved? They are. She should have the mm -hmm. paperwork that Shanna sent over. Mm -hmm. And so they're just waiting for a response from me, and I'll start as soon as I get an answer. How'd you get so many cases dismissed? Um, well, uh, Who's your lawyer? to make a long story <laughs> short, a lot of it dealt with family matters. And I had those there, There's nothing people short when family. you start a sentence like that. So, uh. <laughs> but the. Um, when I first turned 18 years old, I was very immature for my age at the time. Well, frankly, the one that really concerns me is the aggravated robbery from 2003, where you're on eight years with the <coughs> Department of Corrections. Yes, sir. I was uh, with them. I was family members, of course. How'd you do when you're on parole? I uh, did fairly well. Uh, I had one altercation <laughs> with my kids' mom. Nothing. It got dismissed as well. It was a verbal, ver verbal argument. They dismissed the case, but because of the uh, rule that TDOC has set forth, if you engage with police activity, then they would put you back in. Right. And you haven't had anything since 2017? Not since that misdemeanor. I've um, been married since then. I've built up two daycares. We have, my wife is here with me. Uh, we do provide child care. I'm also part of uh, family care services. We're going through two adoptions with our kids that we've been having since birth. Well, she has them since birth. I have my nephew and her adopted daughter for three years now. So we've been... How long have you been married? Uh, three years now. Almost three She's years. smiling, so it must be a good marriage. So. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Like I said, when I was younger it was very dumb decisions that i made so i've been since then trying to turn everything Sorry, around i have get going. some paperwork with photos and all of that stuff yeah i want I to make a motion over. to approve second all those in favor aye, aye. motion passes thank aye. you mr rutherford thank you congratulations thanks robert a smith mr smith good afternoon oh good afternoon <laughs> In, in making his application, Mr. Smith uh, self-disclosed. Uh, he was uh, he gave us all the information. However, there have been some charges in there that we needed to make sure you were aware of. Uh, it's my understanding uh, the the most recent one was a uh, was a domestic assault charge in December of 2017. <coughs> there were actually a couple of assaults that I knew the commission would want to hear about. Yes, sir. Could you explain the assaults to us? Um, on the assault charges, a uh, few of them was actually dismissed. Uh, it was false allegations. Um, a lot of them got dismissed. The last one in 17 um, was dismissed due to the fact of the person dismissed the charges. They did not want to file the charges, and I further along with blown my life. Um, I've turned my life around. Um, I've been trying to do positive now and staying away from negative people. So the one that was retired on December 1st, 2017, who was the alleged victim? It was my ex-wife. Your ex-wife? <laughs> yes, sir. And she came into court and said she didn't want to prosecute the case? Yes, sir. She didn't want to prosecute the case due to the fact she didn't want to ruin my reputation and due to the fact that uh, she's understanding that I'm needing to actually find a good, positive job for our kids so I can help support. Any other concerns, Mr. Fields? Uh, again, he, he, he qualifies under the ordinance other than the issues such as that we wanted to make sure brought to your attention. And Uncle Dave's is ready to hire him. 
It's my understanding. I make a motion to approve. I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We have an add-on that we spoke Thank about. You, Mr. Smith. I have one add-on that I, we sent information to you later, Mr. Newby. Zeke Newby, Ezekiel Newby is uh, as a emergency record driver. We often, because of emergencies, we often bring them in as quickly as we can due to the fact that they have to respond to wrecks on the interstates and such. So All right. Mr. Newby, as well as the owner of Dad's in West Nashville, is, are present. Do you have his in making his in making his application. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Newby failed to disclose a 2016 domestic violence assault. Uh, it was dismissed. He could explain probably that better, yes. but it, he had been a driver before, and in this time period, that's when the uh, alleged assault or the dismissed assault came up. And the owner of Dad, Mr. Mitchell, is here. Good afternoon, Mr. Newby. Good afternoon. The um, domestic violence charge, you, you said it was dismissed? Yes, sir. It was a false charge. And, and expunged, if y'all want to get a look at it. And can you tell us why you didn't list it on your application? I honestly didn't think it was even on my record. It was dismissed as you know, being false. Uh, it was during a custody battle. I have full custody of my son. She was trying to get custody back and throwing accusations any way she could. Uh, you know, it just never even went anywhere. The judge dismissed it, saw it for what it was. I just sort of assumed that it never, you know, was good to go. So I never even thought about it. So you thought you didn't have to put it on the application because it had been dismissed? Yes, sir. I assumed Even though the instructions say include any arrest or anything? Yes, sir. I, I so you were hoping we wouldn't catch it? No, sir. I did There was no ill will. I just honestly forgot about it, didn't think about it. That's been two years ago. Um, it was, I assume, fully gone. And like I said, never even thought about it until it kicked back from the record board and then I had to go back and figure out what it was. And that's when I went, got the paperwork that it was dismissed and all that and brought it back for them. Did you work at Dad's prior? West Nashville. West yes, ma'am. Is that right? Mm. That's Correct. Okay. Mr. Mitchell operates both companies. Oh, okay. So it's the same company. Yes. So I worked at one, wants to bring it back to the other one. Okay, gotcha. Assume he's the good employee. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion regarding Mr. Newby's application? Make a motion to approve his application. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have a low speed vehicle application for Howard Keltner. In making his application, Mr. Keltner failed to disclose a 2018 drug charge. That's incorrect. It was from a long time ago. 1972. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a joint, I had a wait, 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 joint wait, wait, wait. in my pocket. Mr. Keltner, I apologize. That was the day it was denied. Excuse me. I apologize. On the record. Otherwise, he qualifies. I move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, let's see on the time here. We have one driver that, oh, I'm sorry, that's a little bit later. Do, we've got four new company applications, Mr. Fields. Is there any reason we shouldn't take these up together? They're all in order. Make a motion to approve the new company applications on Bonk. And that's for uh, for all four. <laughs> that's Abel, Abel, KM, MA, and National Party. 
You want to throw some Latin on us like that? Yeah, well, <laughs> that, that lawyer just came out of here. <laughs> just trying to, trying to make our deadline. Let's hear, let's hear a uh, second. Oh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. I'll try to refrain from the hearing. Mr. Line. Fields, <laughs> okay, uh, do we have any, are we able to get through? Let's see. We have a request from Elite Private Transportation to add Rhonda Grundman as a partner. Any reason we shouldn't no, sir. approve the request? Make a motion to approve Rhonda Grundman as a uh, partner to Elite Private Transportation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We also have a driver application for Gerald Johnson or other passenger vehicles for hire. Mr. Johnson actually has applied to be a taxi cab driver. I apologize. I put it in the wrong part of the agenda, but he uh, has made application to be a taxi cab driver. And in, in making his application, uh, he just there's has an ex, has extensive um, background, uh, mm -hmm. self-disclosed, uh, did not leave anything out. Um, most of them, as best I can can tell, are uh, are not recent in terms of any of the crimes. And he's present with a representative from the company. I How's everybody doing? Oh, this is 19. All right. Is it, is it my understanding, Mr. Field, that most of this was doing the 90s? Am I looking at this correct? Um, it looks like it. The first 10 are from uh, right. the 2010s. But the second part is his as yeah. well. When you, when you review, uh, a good portion of them would have been the 90s. He would have come forward in, um, and, and again in some in the 80s as well prior to the 90s. Um, I'll note that a number of these are like personal injury, crash reports, speeding tickets, Correct. child support, so they're not necessarily all criminal, yeah. criminal offenses. It, the record that came back from the, the, the most recent TBI reported uh, criminal activity that, that I'm aware of is in 2003, which was a substance, um, a controlled substance issue. And then a parole violation in the same proximity. You've been good for about 15 years. I've been great. That's, that's, a, that's even better answer. I'm a married man now and deacon in the church, so I, that's my past. Like it's my background, it's my background. That's, I raised, I raised two sons. None one of them follow my path. I have a son that is a news reporter for WJ, WJ TV and. Jackson, Mississippi, so I've done good. You've done great. I have a question. Yes, sir. You uh, got a 20-year sentence at one time? Yes. In 1996? Yes, sir. That would have completed when? Oh, uh, in 07. Well, wouldn't it be 20 years from 1996 be 2016? Not completed. When did you get this 20-year sentence? I got it in 06, but I've served. 06? I mean, 96, 96, but I served time. Right. And it was, uh, the time was like, you know, you get percentage by the month. Right. So you get a certain percentage, then you get released. Right. All right. I, when I went back. And then were you released on parole? Yeah. When did your parole complete? In 09. 2009, you're, you yeah. flattened this sentence completely? Flatten everything, yeah. Okay. And that's because you were getting certain, like, credits, 16 yes, days a month or something like yes. that? Okay. Is that your only felony? No, there's another felony in 95, too, in there. Yeah, I had a lot of felonies from 93, 92, 93, 94, 95.
Other than the number of uh, cases on here, you didn't see anything else? I, 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 other than he just was very busy several years ago, he appeared to be uh, qualified. You want to hire him? Yes. Why? Because I've been knowing him for years, and, and I see him so often, so we keep in contact. But I have not really been aware of anything negative, so that will keep me you know, keep me from hiring. I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Johnson's application to drive the cab. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there are then three issues, if, if, if you can indulge me, and I realize it is getting late. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Mr. Blackburn has had asked to speak, and we indicated that it would be okay. And plus, legal has two issues. I'd like to make sure we get onto the record. All right. Mr. Chairman, briefly. Uh, there are nine total citations that are on the agenda. Of those, three, which I can identify if need be, we were going to withdraw today in part because they are subsumed into others, uh, and so we weren't going to trouble you with those. Um, there are three citations here involving American Melody carriages. I don't know if anyone's here who haven't seen Ms. Robinson. I don't know if anyone's here from American Melody. These these could be uh, disposed of uh, in her. I guess we don't have a default <laughs> circumstance exactly. However, these have to do with a failure to have lights on the back of the carriage and a failure at least twice to have uh, the uh, shoes on the horses uh, despite having been ordered to do that by this commission. Um, I have two photographs here from June 29 and another of July 29, plainly showing the horse being uh, utilized without the shoes. They, if you recall, this came up because of, uh, uh, well, there was an issue about whether they should have shoes. She appeared with her attorney and said she did not understand that and you ordered her from that point forward to utilize shoes or boots. Uh, she's violated that, and she's not here to defend it, and we have photographs of it occurring. Aside from that, the others might take a little bit of time because there are videos. One of them involves a, uh, is connected to a criminal case. There was an assault, actually a warrant issued, set for trial before Judge Higgins on a misdemeanor assault case on the 17th of September. So if that is passed to the next meeting, we'll have the outcome of that, presuming it's heard that, that day. Um, the, uh, one of these, of course, is the, the customary Russell Bassett complaint. I assume that he would uh, uh, agree. Uh, we'll be glad to hear that if he wishes to hear it, uh, but uh, I would assume that he would not wish to trouble the commission at this late hour either. Um, there are, um, this may not be quite the time, but there's two things I wanted to discuss briefly. One has to do with uh, horse safety issues, and I wanted to show you these photographs. I thought this would be better for you to discuss, even though they would be in these complaints, better discuss in the absence of any charge having to be determined, uh, because I think it, it relates directly to the suggestion that I have made that I'd like to speak to briefly. So if I may, these, uh, this has to do with uh, uh, an open wound on a Southern Comfort horse, July 7. Um, a, uh, an obviously emaciated horse with its ribs and its spine showing in July. Uh, another of a similar nature uh, and uh, I just wanted to uh, make you aware of these things because it bears directly upon the, uh, the suggestion that I had. I have submitted to Mr. Fields and uh, I circulated another copy uh, a few moments ago by a private security company. You have correctly identified the need and I think we've correctly identified the impediments uh, 
to that, uh, how do we pay for it? Uh, I happen to uh, have some knowledge, more than I might otherwise have. There is a lawsuit pending having to do with private security companies and a monopoly situation and police overtime. I'm not going to litigate that issue today, don't worry about that, but I do know from that that the police department is below its census by approximately 100 officers <clears throat> and that is it is spending several million dollars a year <clears throat> on overtime already. Uh, the overtime for police officers is 43 hours under the Fair Labor Standards Act, not the, the 40. Uh, this has a tremendous burden on the citizens. It has a burden on the taxpayers because that overtime then is computed into the rates against which the pensions are are uh, computed. So it's a large problem. So I say that because I don't think that uh, even if we request it, if you request it, I don't believe the police have the personnel to supply this commission with the day-to-day uh, -day scrutiny of these carriage operations that uh, I would suggest to you is needed. The private security company that uh, proposed this, uh, made the proposal, uh, I don't, that's not a client of mine. I don't represent them. I'm sure there are others that would make proposals as well, but I thought it'd be useful to get something before you so you can see the concept. The concept would be this. We've computed that a charge to these carriage companies uh, that could be passed on to the consumer of roughly $2 per person would more than pay all the expenses for this security company. These are post-certified officers typically from out of town because of certain issues we have with Metro Police and with the chief at the time being forbidding officers from working other companies in Davidson County. So these are outside the county primarily, but they are for the most part post-certified officers. Um, and the, the idea then is uh, that uh, you wouldn't be hiring uh, people. These would not be employed inspectors or police officers. This would be a company that was retained basically in the same way that you might retain a commission to study, to study a subject. Uh, obviously, it has to be paid for, uh, and the means to pay for that is to impose a, uh, a fee or to adjust the fees that are charged on carriage companies uh, sufficient to pay for that at whatever interval is agreed to with the company for payment. You would then have, uh, instead of these monthly harangues and he said, she said, you would first of all have someone down there that would discourage the sort of behavior that we have seen, and secondly, you would have someone there who could report to this commission uh, violations perceived by someone with no dog in the fight someone who's just objective and can uh, present that. Um, now, I'm not sure whether um, animal safety uh, would be within this or not. That would be something that could be uh, determined. That takes some level of expertise. The photographs we brought tonight take none. Um, and uh, uh, the, the, the welfare of these animals obviously is important to a whole lot of people. Uh, beyond the beyond the industry, but uh, at any rate, what I would uh, recommend that you do is, with the evidence presented and with uh, and we have people who can testify if you wish to hear it, and in the absence of Miss Robinson, unless she has contacted Mr. Fields or the commission and asked him for a postponement, uh, that she be found guilty of these charges and that whatever punishment you believe is necessary to be imposed. Um, I would remind you that you told her she would be suspended if she didn't comply with the rule, and she's plainly not done so as to the shoeing of the animals. Um, then uh, I don't know that, uh, that today is a time for you to sit down and vote on hiring a private security company. I suspect it's not. You'd want to know something about them. Perhaps Mr. Fields interview them. And then uh, there has to be some discussion as to whether paying for that entity through this uh, fee structure, uh, which we are confident can be done, uh, ought to be done. That's a policy decision by the, by the commission. Um, 
but I believe these uh, issues, these problems are, they're not going away. When I came to Nashville, the idea that someone would go from one place to another in downtown Nashville on a golf cart would have provoked laughter. Nobody would have taken that seriously. Uh, if you're familiar with Mr. Keel Hunt, a uh, prominent local Nashvilleian wrote an article in the Tennessean a few weeks ago in which he said, how did downtown Nashville turn into a theme park? So what I hear you doing is you are trying to handle downtown, particularly lower broad issues, as though it's, a, it's, it's Wall Street or a business district and you're trying to, the whole purpose, the whole sense of that part of town has fundamentally changed. None of us did it, we're just looking at it. And these things have to be considered in, in context. Uh, it's not technically even strictly a, a, a transportation issue, but it has crept up on us and we're not necessarily all organized to, the, to, to cope with these things. Traf what is traffic and parking's uh, responsibility? What is the police responsibility? The, this special event uh, committee uh, through the, um, uh, has been through the mayor's office. How does that relate to the secondary employment? There's all kinds of issues that we don't have the time or the authority to deal with. But what we can do is say, in terms of making sure that these carriage operators follow the law, and in terms of making sure that you don't have horses that are not shod, making sure that the back end of those carriages contain the lights, this type of thing, absolutely these people can, uh, can do that. Thank you. Thank you. May I be permitted to address the commission? Yes. A couple of thoughts. Um, the first issue I wanted to raise at this meeting, um, I think recently we have had some issues raised about ex parte communication with members of the commission. And so I wanted to go ahead and address that either for the newer members of the commission or um, you know, as a refresher um, for those who have been here longer. Um, I believe that Mr. Um, Fields may have circulated to you an attorney general opinion on this issue. Um, the attorney general opinion um, addresses a city council, um, but it, it is interpreted to apply to boards and commissions and their members as well. Um, and basically it makes a distinction between different functions um, that bodies like that may serve. Um, uh, one being quasi-judicial or administrative, um, and one being legislative. Um, a body is serving in a, um, a legislative function when they make a new law, which council for the most part does, for example. Um, so they generally would not be subject to the ex parte communication prohibition. Um, this commission, however, does not infrequently sit in an administrative or quasi-judicial capacity. So you have to be a little more careful about this issue because of that. When somebody who might have an interest in such a matter would, would attempt to contact you about it, and it might be administrative or quasi-judicial, um, we would ask that you refrain from engaging in that ex parte communication because um, uh, and the, the reason for the prohibition against ex parte communication is that it can be um, a, a due process issue, that it may give an appearance of propri impropriety, um, that the commissioners may have been um, kind of unfairly influenced without the other side being aware of it, and that that may influence your decision um, uh, at the open meeting. Um, there's always a way for people to get information that they want to relay to you, to you prior to a meeting, which is to provide it in writing to Mr. Fields, who can then distribute it not just to the commissioners, but make it a part of the public record, which is then available to everybody, so it is not ex parte. Um, ex parte means like outside of the, um, uh, uh, not in the presence of the other party, um, so, so that you, um, would be hearing only one side of the story, basically. Um, so your recommendation when someone approaches it by email or by telephone is to say, you can provide any information you want to Mr. Fields who will disseminate it to the entire commission. If you want to try to make the distinction between the legislative and ad administrative capacities, um, 
you know, in a legislative capacity, maybe like a rulemaking capacity for you. you. You could, in theory, have communication with such persons. I would not say that you are obligated to. Um, and if if you're in doubt, you could certainly always contact Mr. Fields or myself or Ms. Ladd, and we'd be glad to kind of talk you through it. But if you prefer to just suggest that written communications be submitted, I think that would be fine as well. Was was there a conclusion to, I guess, the the, the woman who was emailing and wanting Well, that is one of the reasons I suggested that I could address you in the okay. public meeting format um, here today is because, you know, this is broadcast and um, open to the public, so it's a way to kind of address it in a public way and to kind of explain the distinctions without necessarily getting into a dialogue with an individual. Chairman, may you firm please that all my communications about this subject were through Mr. Fu. I haven't talked to any of these uh, commissioners. And it was, this wasn't in okay. reaction no, not about to you, you Mr. All. Blackburn. Well, I don't mean to be hypersensitive. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine you being hypersensitive. Um, I, the other issue that I um, was asked by Mr. Fields to present to you is um, related to um, the, the carriages issue, though, um, which is um, uh, Mr. Fields and Ms. Ladd and I have discussed for some time um, the concern that the um, disciplinary complaints um, have recently, not, not recently even, but you know historically also, been um, voluminous in, in number, and, and that sometimes that is challenging for you all to um, resolve um, on your monthly agendas. Um, and um, we were seeking a way to manage that that might be. Um, hopefully overall less of a drain on your time. Um, and so um, looking at other precedents, um, I came across a civil service policy about how they handle their proceedings. They're obviously a very busy commission that has very many um, matters that come before them. And um, at the present time, the way, and they hear employee disciplinary complaints, basically, um, among other things. Um, but um, the, pre the present time, the way they handle those matters is they um, are referred to the Secretary of State's office, which has um, a set of administrative law judges that they make available to kind of try cases like that. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not suggesting that as an option here because we don't have the funding for it in this context, that, at least not that I'm aware of. But the yeah. way the rule actually reads, because apparently they did not used to have the funding for it either, was that individual commission members were empowered to sit individually as hearing officers in kind of an administrative law judge-like capacity. And um, individual um, complaints at the initial phase would be presented to this individual and the evidence would be presented. Each side would have an opportunity to present their um, positions. And then the hearing officer would make an initial recommendation, which would then be presented back to the commission as a whole. Um, and they could have kind of a more limited hearing at that point and be able to basically take the recommendation or send it back for more fact finding or, um, uh, you know, amend it um, uh, or reject it. Um, so um, that process was apparently done by the Civil Service Commission for a number of years and apparently worked. So we wanted to kind of lay that out there for you as something that you all could consider doing as a way of dealing with um, disciplinary complaints, especially when they come in in high volume numbers. Um, uh, and um, the way you would do that if you wanted to take that option would be um, a rule change. Um, and of course, our rule change is we have a, a requirement um, by the code that you have a public hearing before you make a rule change. So this would not be something that you could do today. So this is kind of just informational. Um, one unrelated comment, but just on the proposal that you also just heard, I would just say that if the commission were interested in hiring a security firm, I, I wanted to advise you also that the metropolitan government is obliged to do its procurement through a competitive bidding process, so we wouldn't be able to just vote to hire one company unilaterally. So basically, just to sum up what you said, we would vote on someone who's already on the commission 
to hear it. Or all of you individually Draw taking straws, turns. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> you, you know, that, that was how the commission, the Civil Service Commission did it, is that they would all rotate. It's clearly above what you would have been appointed by the mayor to do. This is already in practice? But it does. It was, it's not currently being done that I know of by any board or commission, but it was done by the Civil Service Commission for a number of years, according to um, our um, uh, deputy, deputy um, uh, director, and um, who was also formerly the attorney for that commission. Is there for a reason why it's no longer done? But they, they got funding to, to they got funding to be able to send oh, it to okay. the ALJ. <laughs> so, but they could still do it that way if they wanted to. It's still a part of their active role. Could there be, could we, could we look into having an additional commissioner who, I mean, who sets the number of commissioners and could there be an additional commissioner? So you are created by council ordinance, which is now a part of the Metropolitan Code. So that would have to be a council amendment of the code by ordinance. You'd have to do it too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, my immediate reaction is that doesn't seem realistic um, I mean even if we did that in practice you'd have a single commissioner making a recommendation coming back before the Commission making the recommendation <laughs> us hearing everything through this person um, I mean I think it, it, it could streamline meetings um, but I think overall it would still be just as time consuming? Not, it, not that you necessarily want to do this, but one option that you would have would be to watch some civil service commissions on the Metro <laughs> Nashville network because um, they, they do idea. this, basically they use the ALJs, but it's essentially this, they have, having a hearing officer, whether that person is a commissioner or an, an appointed law judge, um, it's, it's still a similar process. So you could see kind of the degree to which they kind of get into the individual cases. Um, after an initial recommendation is presented by a hearing officer. The chairman, there is a, I guess he's called a referee that serves one of the general sessions judges, I think presently Judge Walker, and what he hears are uh, ordinance violations that are not dissimilar to these. It has to do with um, uh, like codes violations. Oh, you're talking about environmental court? The environmental court. Um, and they hear any citations that we issue out of this commission goes to the same. That's that, right. That is a that's, little bit different, but that would be distinct from the disciplinary jurisdiction that you all exercise. That's that's already funded, and I don't know uh, whether there's any. That has been somewhat controversial uh, because of the funding. I'm not taking a position on that uh, for the record. <laughs> Uh, but at any rate, that could be a possibility that his or her duties could be expanded because it would only be, it'd be trivial compared to what he's already doing. The way that environmental court was created was complicated. I cannot recall, the, it may have been like a private act or something like that because yeah. General Sessions is related to state courts as well. And so I, that, that would probably maybe be harder to do, although I don't yeah. have that authority in front of me. Well, the Administrative Procedures Act does not apply to muni municipalities, so as a result of that, you don't have that automatic UAPA. Uh, those uh, administrative law judges are state employees. Yes, um, I mean, that's true in the um, that's true in the civil service context as well, but they will contract with anyone who's willing to pay the cost of using them to adjudicate a case. Well, I think it's an interesting idea. And uh, I suspect you all aren't doing this for the money. <laughs> and it would, it would be involved someone having some additional duty. So that's not for me to say. We, we will continue to look for ways to best manage your, your time. We certainly are looking for a way to take advantage of your time. But we are, in another way, 
one of the things I'd like to bring to your attention that uh, that uh, Mr. Blackman brought up and that was in, is in this in the part of the complaints. What I'd like to do, if you if you read through the ordinance, I have reasonably extraordinary authority over the welfare of the horses uh, based on the volume of complaints that we've had that have not gotten to you, some that are unsubstantiated of people who won't actually file the papers mm -hmm. what I'd like to do is go ahead and invoke a couple of spots in the ordinance where I'm going to ask for more record keeping from all the companies on horses I'd like to uh, they're, they're already required to go to the vet twice a year uh, so it's about time for that report to come back. So what I'll be doing is asking for the, the mid-year uh, report quickly because we haven't had it yet. Secondly, I'm going to be asking that we get reports of when the horses work, their actual hours of work, when, when they're on, when they're off. Uh, and in, in doing so, I'll be asking them to do just like we do for the taxi cabs. S swear to me every month that the, all the vehicles meet all the standards and do the same thing for the horses. Uh, test that all the horses are meeting all the standards. They're getting the proper rest. They're getting the proper nutrition. They're getting out. And we'll just, uh, one of the ways we'll be able to do is just put that on the record. Everybody's doing the same thing exactly the same every month. And I don't need approval or authority. I just more inf information that I wanted to be on the record and in front of all the industry that uh, uh, if you go through there were 55 independent individual viol uh, potential violations that you would have considered today uh, you're, we're still going to have to consider that I think you're going to actually have to have a special meeting as be my recommendation to deal with them if we're going to deal with them in total as we've discussed um, with that amount, that's that's a high volume, and those are all self-reported out of the companies, either the companies against companies, drivers against drivers, and so forth. Uh, it's it's very, I'm very concerned about the welfare of the horses. I'll be meeting next week with the Metropolitan Health Department. Uh, we're we do have some changes we're going to be bringing that have gone through the University of Tennessee's Equine Services. Some of them they'll approve, some of the folks will not like it, but uh, we're 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 going to make sure the horses are safe and the people riding in the carriages are safe. I have nothing else to present to the commission. All right. Well, uh, do we need to make a formal motion to defer our uh, the complaints to the next month, or to set them for a special meeting? I, I think it's up to you on how you want to deal with them. I I don't think you're going to be able to deal with them in a regular meeting and have the rest of the agenda with it. Not, not this one. I do want to give it Mr. Blackburn. We won't have to do it today, but to figure out which ones have been are going to be withdrawn, that will help us a little bit. Uh, but we'll, he and I can work through that. Do we know why Melody Carriages didn't show up? I, no idea. We mailed the letter on August 1st. We mailed the letter out on August 1st. I'm assuming she got her mail. Uh, we did not do it certified mail. I'm a little, the fact that it wasn't certified. Again, me being the extraordinarily cautious person that I am, I would I would like to make sure that she had absolute notification without question. Uh, even though, again, it's the mail we always use. Given the seriousness of everything, I agree with you. I'm sorry. Given the seriousness of the situation, I agree with you. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah any time, any time a certificate's on the line, I want to make sure that there's that we've given everybody the appropriate notice, and there's no question. But uh, we actually don't send all certified mail to save money. It may be that we just have to start spending the money regardless to make sure we don't have this issue. Wait for a motion to adjourn. Yes. I make a motion to adjourn. I second that motion. I hope so. I guess we need to get together and finding a date.